from Moscow, Idaho, KRNV and Gustin Sports Productions bring you the defending Big Sky champion University of Nevada Wolfpack versus the University of Idaho Vandals. loves to throw the foot <laughs> Vandals explosive offense that means they must shut down Vandals quarterback Doug Nussmeyer Idaho loves to throw the football it'll be a big test for the Wolfpack secondary he's the key we can contain him and I'll keep the ball out of Casey hands and probably make him go go to the run more. I think it'll be a big pass for us. He's really their whole offense right now. They haven't got the running game where they had it last year. Uh, he's throwing it, you know, 40, 45 times a game and uh, throwing for over 370 yards a game. So uh, he's explosive. He's got Casey Dunn, great receiver, uh, leading the nation in receiving. And uh, so we got a, we got a big challenge. And that challenge for UNR is just about to begin. Kickoff is just moments away. Dan Gustin and James Curry are standing by to call all the action for you. Let's take you up to the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, Idaho. Gentlemen? Well, thanks very much, Kurt, and uh, welcome to Moscow, Idaho. We're in the Kibbe Dome where today, of course, the University of Nevada, number one, the nation, takes on Idaho. James, number one and two was all set up until last week. Although the teams aren't one and two in the nation, it's one and two in the Big Sky Conference. It's a big game for both of them. It's a big game either way, Dan. You can throw out the rankings because a grudge match like this after last year's outstanding game that they played at Mackey Stadium is going to be an outstanding game to watch this afternoon. Well, let's go back two years. Uh, when we were here two years ago, it was a big game for the University of Idaho. They riddled the secondary for the Wolfpack. Uh, there's some revenge on the Wolfpack side. They want to get even and prove that they're a better secondary than they showed two years ago. A lot of revenge factor involved, but you're looking at a mature secondary now in comparison to three years ago. These guys are coming in ready to play this year. They've got that in the back of their mind. Their major objective today is to stop the quarterback, Nesmeyer of Idaho. Well, that's the way it is up here. It's a big one. We'll see at halftime, Kurt. All right, Dan and James, thank you very much. We'll get back to you momentarily. The kickoff is straight ahead here on KRNV. UNR and Idaho about to go nose to nose. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at the half. The champions. The challenges. Welcome everyone to our simulcast today from the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, Idaho, the University of Nevada against the University of Idaho. I'm Dan Gustin along with James Curry. James, the Wolfpack is going to kick off. They normally, if they win the toss, they'll defer and take the ball to start the third quarter. Things are working out well for them. Well, the Wolfpack likes to be in this position. They like to have their defense on the field first. They feel that they have the defense that can come out and set the tempo of a ball game. And they're feeling very comfortable about having Idaho receive the ball. They want to see what Nesmeyer can do right off the bat. If they can come out and stop it, they're advancing. Our kickoff today is sponsored by the Northern Nevada Toyota dealers. Rick Schwendinger is teeing it up. Ronnie White, along with Saunders, will be deep for the Vandals to bring it out. Walter Saunders will be on the far side. White on the near side, the left-footed Schwindinger, taking it up at the 35-yard line. Schwindinger has it all set, so he retreats back, and this one about to get fired up. Gets the signal. Left footer stares at it. And the Wolfpack gets down. He comes forward. It's a high end over end kick. It has gone Saunders' way at the five yard line. At the 10, 15, 20, 25. He is grabbed by the ankle and brought down at the 25 yard line. Vandals will have it. First and 10 from that point. Some of the best field position for a Wolfpack opponent early in this year. You know, coming out. Oh. Wolfpack have been so efficient on holding returners underneath the 20-yard line. Uh, so they have to start right off right here and set out a point on defense that they're going to stop this high score attack. At their own 25-yard line, Saunders will come wide right. Ness Meyer going back behind him. That's Devin Pierce. Wolfpack showing deep bump and run against the Idaho offense. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. 
Motion man is Yo Murphy. He comes all the way right side. Nussmeyer on a delay to Pierce. Grabbed at the line of scrimmage and tackled by Matt Clafton. Clafton gets the opening hit of the ball game as he filled the hole quickly, James Curry. Well, they felt that they could hold Matt Clafton within the middle for most of the afternoon, and you will see him on a few blitz situations here this afternoon, and Matt Clafton made a great one-on-one -on -one tackle that time against Pierce. Wicker and Schneider, the strong tackle, strong guard. The center is Spellman. Dory, the weak guard. And Smith, the weak tackle. Nussmeyer, the quarterback, get a look at the other backfield. Second and nine from the 26-yard line. We just started, no score. Vandals with opening possession. Nussmeyer, no back backfield. Looks right side, throws up the seam, complete to Casey Don. He's over the 50 to the 45 and down inside the 45-yard line. Just a great seam route that time by Casey Dunn. Running down the middle against Brock Merritt. He lined up at the inside receiver's position and was able to come off the field. A little juke move to the inside, got inside Merritt. Marion just a great float pass by Nesmeyer that time for a big play and a first down. Wolfpack defense features Casper Rogers, Buddy, and Harker down lineman with Clapton inside. Amatia starting the first time in three weeks along with Mark Drejos. Big play early for this Vandal offensive attack. Out the Wolfpack 42-yard line, first and 10. Done with a 32-yard catch and run. Nesmeyer on the option, pitches to Pierce, coming left side. He's got some running room inside the 40. Clafton gets him near the 35-yard line, but the first to make contact was Xavier Carey. Excellent play call that time. You come with the long pass, you come back with a little option play to the wide side of the field. Great block that time on the outside by the, by the receiver on Brock Marin. Might have been a little holding, got away with it by the official. That time turned it up for a gain of seven second in a short situation here. Second and about four to go at the pack 36 yard line. Again, two wide receivers right. Saunders is alone on the left side. Pierce in the backfield gets a call right side. At the line of scrimmage, he has met and hit and brought down at the 35 yard line. Matt Clapton knifing through there, making a great stop in the backfield on Pierce. No one was able to get a hand on him. Great job by the defensive line of the Wolfpack. We have a flag down. You can tell, James, there's a lot of emotion because there are conversations after every play between the players. Yeah, we got a personal foul call here this time. It'll be against the Wolfpack. I'm not sure if it was taunting, but there was some conversation going on. The personal foul is the indication. Gary Peters, our referee, signaling the Wolfpack will be penalized 15 yards. The officials are getting involved early in this contest here this afternoon. This is the type of game that you're going to have a lot of emotions, and the officials must understand that this game is a lot early the in the season. First down. So this, this is for the, the, Wolf, the Big Sky lead in the conference. They're going to have to let the players play. A lot of emotion is flowing. They're, they're fired up and playing on adrenaline right now at the 20-yard line. It is first and 10 battles as they come to the line of scrimmage. They started back on their own 25. 13.05 to go in the first quarter. The Wolfpack has not touched the ball offensively. Nesmeyer studying the defense. Has three wide receivers left. He moves Pierce in the backfield. We'll give it to him. Pierce slicing up the middle. Good hole inside the 15. He will go down near the 11-yard line. That's a great cutback move that time by Pierce. Started off to the left. They pulled the right guard that time, trying to get around. Swing, swing in there trying to get around to the outside. He saw the hole, he was able to cut back underneath the floor of the defense, able to get down inside the 15-yard line to about the 12. One of the things the Wolfpack does not want to do, James, is over-pursue. And, and that's what he is. He's a great cutback runner. Last week, he had a big struggle, only 10 yards, and he's had a great opening first quarter here in this initial drive. Yo Murphy is alone on the right side. Two receivers left. Again, Pierce the eye back. He gets the call. Left side. Good fill by Clafton. Clafton came up and hit Pierce right at the line of scrimmage. Matt Clafton is playing inspirational football here in the first quarter. He has been solid on all tackles this afternoon. Very firm wrap up, bring him down, do not allow him to gain that extra yard. The defensive line is keeping the, the offensive line off of Matt Clafton. Offside will be charged against the Wolfpack, so they're exuberant. At the line of scrimmage may cost them after an excellent defensive play by the leading all-time tackler for the Wolfpack, Matt Clafton. He was Big Sky Player of the Week defensively last week. 12 tackles and two sacks. Clafton, the senior out of Dublin, California. By the defense, always going to have his nose first on the down. Ball. Well, two penalties here against the Wolfpack in this opening initial drive. Very unaccustomary of the defense. The way they've played this year, they've, they've had an outstanding, disciplined defensive group, and to have two penalties in the opening drive of the game is not their style of defense. 
It'll be first and goal now at the seven-yard line for the Vandals. They took it back at their 25. And they got an extra defensive man on the field. The Wolfpack does. They're and Lackey, has gone, he has gone to the wrong side, so the flag is down. Lackey went to the opposite side of the field, James. You just don't do that. You get the illegal participation penalty here. But what it does, it does not allow them to run a play where they have a free play. The penalty, you know, it's a bad penalty, three in this drive, but he exited the field on the wrong side. A lot of confusion on the Nevada side of the field right now. James, we were talking in the airplane coming up here yesterday about how much experience is needed and how if you need to come to the stadium before the game because when you get here, will you be intimidated by the crowd? I would say that's just a bonehead play by Lackey simply because he may have been intimidated. Well, what happened? They sent Harker on the field at the last moment and did not indicate for Harker to send someone out. They brought in the extra defensive lineman to, re to replace the defensive back for the run position on the field and they did not indicate to Harker who to substitute for. This time they bring Harker back out, bring Bryant back out on the field. A lot of substitution by the Wolfpack defense here. It is still first and goal to goal. This time it's from about the four yard line three and a half or so two wide receivers right Nesmeyer taking his time at the line of scrimmage gives to Pierce coming right side inside the five he dives toward the goal line did he get there Idaho signal touchdown it is a touchdown for the Vandals Pierce fumbled the ball at the one yard line it was recovered by one of the offensive linemen picked it up Floyd Dory that time picked up the fumble when Pierce was hit by Matt Clapton on the one Bubbled the ball into the end zone. The offensive lineman fell on to it for the touchdown. The, the guy who recovered the fumble was the center, David Spellman, the 6'6", 273-pound junior. He's the guy who got it. He was stopped short of the goal line with, with the hit by the Wolfpack defenders that time. He fell forward for the, and for the touchdown. Dane Doyle to try the extra point. It's blocked at the line of scrimmage, and it goes out of the end zone. So the score will remain 6-0. Idaho with a drive from the opening possession from their own 25-yard line. They go 75 yards. They're on top of the Wolfpack, 6-0. We have a timeout. Here at the Kibbe Dome, we have a timeout. We, I guess, we'll take the timeout. We will be... University of Nevada will get their hands on the ball offensively for the first time this afternoon. After Idaho, James, uh, efficiently, with the help of some penalties, going 75 yards for the opening score. A lot similar to the Las Vegas game of last year when they drove down in the initial possession and scored. And that's the first time the Wolfpack has given up a touchdown in the first quarter all year. Very uncharacteristic with the four penalties in the opening drive of the game. The Wolfpack is going to have to steady themselves when they get the ball here on offense. Brian Reeves and Joe King will be deep for the Wolfpack. Standing near their goal line as Thane Doyle, the guy who missed the extra point, had it blocked. George kick off. George Buddy was the one to come through there. We spoke about George on that block. End over end kick going Reeves' way. He will take it at the four. 10, 15, looking for running room, a little bit hesitant, and he will get not up to the 20 yard line. James, we talk about intimidation. Reeves did not lower his head. He was not going full steam ahead. Brian Reeves has had one criticism as a kick returner this year, is that he just not, just, does not explode up the field. He tries to jitterbug. Jitterbugging at this level of football is not really going to get you too many open field positions. That time he tried to dance around, allowed the defense to close on him. They brought him down short of the 20-yard line. It is just shy of the 20, but we will call it the 20-yard line. First and 10, Wolfpack. Three wide receivers come left. The wide man is Singleton. Eric Smith, as we said earlier, on our radio portion of our simulcast, will start in the backfield in place of Zeke Moore and Diedrich Holmes. Gatlin, on the opening carry, gives to Smith, hit at the line of scrimmage, may get a yard or two as he fights forward, but the Idaho defense as fired up as the Wolfpack defense was. Jeff Robinson was in on the hit. Jeff Robinson is probably the leader of this defense. He comes in with 28 tackles on the season. An outstanding defensive lineman last year, Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year. Zeke Moore replaced in the backfield by Eric Smith as the Wolfpack going with the one back start and three wide receivers. They will line up the same way. King closest to the line of scrimmage on the left side. Reeves in the middle and Singleton is the wide man. Gain of two and it's second and eight. Gatlin will throw. He throws left side wide open. Singleton, he'll have the first down over the 30 and bounced out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Damon Taggart that time coming from his strong side linebacker position all the way out to knock out Singleton, the wide receiver from his out position. Singleton comes into the game with 11 catches for 226 yards and two touchdowns this year. An outstanding receiving core by the Wolfpack. All of them are explosive. They'll mark it at the 36-yard line. Again, Wolfpack first and 10. This time they send the three wide men to the wide side of the field to Gatlin's right. 
Gatlin checking out the defense. Idaho playing it pretty straight. He'll throw on first down. Plenty of time. Throws over the middle. Completed the 40-yard line to Reeves. Reeves may get to the 41. That would be a gain of five. Tag it again on the tackle. He's been very active from his linebacker position here early in the game. We mentioned Tigert a couple of times. He and Robinson leading him in tackles. Sims, an outstanding defensive player for the Vandals. He has not been in the action so far. In the secondary, they're questionable. They have a lot of new people back there. Gain of near five. We'll call it second and about five and a half. Gatlin will go on the ground. Smith looks right, comes left. He'll go back to the line of scrimmage. That'll be about it. James, we talked earlier about Eric Smith and not being in real fire, not real bullets in two weeks, he is hesitant going to the line of scrimmage. A little indecisive in his running. If you notice Devin Pearson, the opening drive for the Vandals, he was able to cut back, very fluid in his running. Eric Smith is a little timid still. He was a timid two weeks ago when we saw him in his first game. He has really not got the game leg on him as of yet. Now the Wolfpack now with a third down, a conversion coming up third and five. The Vandals did not have a third down in their opening drive. Gatlin to throw. Throws off balance, and it's out of bounds incomplete. Gatlin just got rid of it. Out of bounds. He had heavy pressure up the middle. Sermon was in his face, and Gatlin had it delivered out of bounds. They just came with a straight four-man rush. They did not blitz. They dropped seven people back in the coverage, trying to disguise over Gatlin. Got in on him, did not allow him time to set up. He had to float that one out of bounds. Bad series by the Wolfpack offense. Schwendinger will punt, and Saunders is the deep man back in inside his 20-yard line. The left-footed Schwendinger will get it away from about his 30. Matter with a good snap to him. He gets it off. Spiraling kick that Saunders will take at the 20, hit immediately, and got out of the tackle. Matter had him, and then Jackson made down, got downfield to solidify the hit. So the Vandals leading the Wolfpack 6-0 with 9.40 to go here in the... Well, the Vandals will have the ball to start at their own 19-yard line. On their last possession, their first, they started at their own 25. And they marched down the length of the field. And they did it rather effectively and very efficiently. Let's see what they do now. Doug Nussmeyer steps up under center. Three wide receivers left. A no-back backfield as Ronnie White playing in the backfield for, for the first time comes wide right. Nussmeyer looking left. Throws on a slant to beat the 30, the 35, and out near the 40-yard line. A good catch that time by Joe Murphy. Just a slant route outside from Joe Murphy lining up on the left side of the formation. Coming in on about a 10-yard slant, Nesmeyer was right on the money with the pass. Joe Murphy was able to split the seam. If not for an arm-saving tackle by Reggie Robinson, he might have gone all the way with that one. Here it is again. Duck. Nesmeyer dropping back, just throwing the ball over the middle on the slant. Just a great catch and reception and, and to run with the ball. So far, strength against strength. The Idaho offense is out-dueling the Wolfpack defense. Pierce with a carry over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Murphy delivering a very late hit to Forey Duckett on the opposite side. Duckett just walking away, and the officials, instead of throwing a flag, just talked to the Idaho player. Very aggressive uh, play this early in this game by this Vandal offense. They've gone out and take a few unnecessary late hits, and the officials have allowed it so far. The Wolfpack, when they retaliated earlier, they got an unnecessary roughness call. One thing is going to be have to be settled by the, the officials. It's got to go both ways. It's a gain of four, second and six Vandals at their own 42-yard line. They lead 6-0 with 8.45 to go in the first quarter. Nesmeyer again to throw, stays in the pocket. Arm fake, he's got running room up the middle. He's grabbed by Drejos at the 45-yard line, and Doug Nussmeyer will go down near the 47. He will be about a yard short of the first down. That time, an excellent job of coverage by the secondary of the Wolfpack. They were able to lock up on the receivers and cover them stride for the stride over the field. Nesmeyer saw that he was running out of time, stepped up between the tackles. Great surge by the Wolfpack defensive line to get upfield, but left the seam, and the linebackers had vacated, and Dre also had to bring him down from behind short for of a first down. Nevada, again, in number one position coming into this game in the 1AA, and Idaho down at 14. Third down for the Vandals, and two to go for a first down. Nussmeyer on the option, pitches to the deep man, Pierce. He'll have the first down and more over midfield to the Wolfpack 48-yard line. Brock Marion, the first to get to him, and then Xavier Carey finished up. The real threat right here with the Vandals offense is putting in the veer. You know you have a very vaunted running attack, but Nesmeyer being able to get out, press the corner, pitch the ball to Pierce. He's been able to get outside without any pressure from the defense and able to turn up field, get his shoulder squared, and pick up the first down. Buddy got a little bit late to Nesmeyer. Nesmeyer had gotten rid of it, and Buddy really didn't get a shot to deliver one. Vandals with another first down at the pack 48. Nesmeyer faking the dive, got time, looking right side, throws, incomplete. Off 
the fingertips of the intended receiver, Ali Alima Daly. Ali Alima Daly was out there, but it just had one hand on it and couldn't hang on. Daly, the tight end, did a real quick block at the line of scrimmage. Was able to come across the field from the left side of the formation, coming across the pattern. Nesmeyer with a great play fake in the backfield, able to buy time, then to deliver a strike. Just a stride too short, too long for Daly. Otherwise, another big play for this Vandal offense. Idaho now with second and ten. Three wide receivers left. The wide man is Saunders. Six nothing. Idaho on top of the pack. Pierce again on a draw up the middle. He's got running, good running room. Gets outside left. He's inside the pack 40-yard line to the 38-yard line. Xavier Carey has to come up and make the stop along with Reggie Robinson. They really have this Wolfpack confused, defense confused at the moment. All the play mixing up that they're doing right now. That time coming back with the draw play after the great play fake on the pass. The Wolfpack looking for the, the pass again. Came back with the draw. Getting the offensive line out, lineman out on the linebackers. Dory got Clafton off his feet, which left the middle open for that great run. Blackie will come out and Harker will return to the pack lineup. Gain of nine, third and one. Quick count, Nussmeyer again to Pierce up the middle. That's, that was blocked off as Jim, Big Joe Caspers got across the line of scrimmage and put his shoulder into Pierce, and Pierce went nowhere. Joe Caspers did a great job right there, penetrating right in the middle of the defensive lineman, got lower than the offensive line, found the seam, got through, tripped Pierce up, possibly short of the first down here. Great job by Joe Caspers on that play. Pierce fell forward on a second effort. It'll be very close to a first down. He got a good spot from the officials on that, but Big Joe Caspers did a great job of penetrating, getting off on the snap count, not being slow on it, but very quick, and got off and made the great job of penetration. Just inches short of the first down. Steve Bryant has come in, back in the lineup, and Nick Parker has exited. So again, a big decision to be made by the Idaho offense. Fourth and short, they're going to go for it. At their own 38-yard line, a time for the Wolfpack defense to make a stand and make a statement. Momentum all in favor of the Vandals leading 6-0 with 6.46 to go in the first quarter here in our simulcast on the Wolfpack Radio Network and KRNV in Reno. Inches to go for the first down. Nesmeyer up under center. Two wide receivers right. Pierce the lone back. Gives to Pierce. Hit at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure it. he got it. Mark Trejo stepped up to make the giant hit for the Wolfpack. He didn't make it on that. Joe Cash was, again, very instrumental in that play. Joe got across with a great swim move in the middle of the line to get penetration to make Pierce change his direction. When he came with the cutback, Mike Rogers was right there to bring him down for the, for the tackle. Now, the officials uh, the, may be the determining factor here where they spot the ball, but Mark Drehos was there very quickly to wrap up Pierce, the ball carrier. Let's see where they stretch the chains if the Wolfpack defense is held. It's close. The officials have to get down and eyeball it. It'll be short. The official on both knees down to see it, and the call is short. It's first down Wolfpack. Great play by the Wolfpack defense. Big surge by the defensive line. Two plays in a row, the Wolfpack was able to come up. Big Joe Casper's got across, got across like a defensive lineman should. You got to get across, create that penetration, disruption in the backfield, turnover for the defense. You talk about momentum swings, the sideline for the Vandals. They went for it on fourth and short, didn't get it. Now does it go back to the Wolfpack, James Curry? That's the break that the Wolfpack needs. They came out, was moved upon very easily in that opening series by the Vandals. Nevada right here has to steady themselves put something together in a serious offensive drive. Joe King, the flashy receiver with six touchdowns for the pack, is wide left. He's all alone out there. Wolfpack going with a two-tight end offense. Tom Williamson is in along with Benning. On the ground, they go to Smith. Up the middle, good running room over the 40 to maybe the 42-yard line. For the first time this afternoon, the Wolfpack's got their running game in gear. That's what Eric Smith does well, is a straight-ahead power runner. He is not the slashy runner that you've seen from Zeke Moore, the freshman that you've seen earlier in the year that they've put in a couple of games, Holmes. Eric Smith is that power runner. You have to give him the ball with his head of steam, let him hit up in there for four or five yards every carry. This time, Benning will set up on the left side. Williams and the other tight end on the right side. 6 nothing Vandal with just under six minutes to go in the first quarter. Idaho scored on the opening drive. Their after touchdown point attempt was blocked. Again, Smith on the ground, starts out left, comes back right. He will get to the 44-yard line before they stand him up and stop his progress. Smith turns and throws the ball at the Idaho defense at Jeff Robinson. That's not the guy you want to bring any anger out in. 
Robinson is maybe their best defensive player. He is the guy that will get in your backfield and disrupt it. But Al Robinson also, you, that's the guy you need to go at. If he's your best defensive lineman, challenge him. Challenge what they put on the field best. Go after him. You don't want to run away from him and give him that type of respect. You want to go straight at him and let him beat you if he can. Nevada can certainly accept 47% of their third downs. Has another one coming up on third and three at their own 45-yard line. Three wide receivers left. Gatlin to throw. In the pocket. Scramble. Throws. Incomplete. And intended for Reed. But again, Gatlin was moving, unstable, unsure of where he wanted to throw it, and threw it wide. That time, Gatlin seemed totally unsettled in the pocket. He was not comfortable. He had plenty of time given to him by the offensive line, couldn't find his primary receiver, checked off, his secondary receiver was covered, and forced the ball over the middle of Reeves. Feel very fortunate that he didn't have that one intercepted that time. James, it looks to me in the first quarter, the Wolfpack is unsteady, unsure at home. They have all the emotions and all the assurity that they're going to perform well. They're uncertain right now in front of this crowd. Coming to the confines of an in enclosed stadium is a lot different than playing on an open field at your home ground. Schwindinger with time to hang it high for Saunders running right. He signals a fair catch. He'll take it at the 16-yard line. The nice thing about it for the pack is they have gotten better field position on the punt. We'll take a timeout reminding you, you know, tonight, starting at 5 o'clock, they're going to have the fall brawl. I tell you, right now, they've got a brawl going on, but at the Reno Sparks Convention Center, Sweet Pete Whitaker takes on Jorge Paez. That's going to be quite a fight. World Championship fight. Two of the better fighters fighting nowadays, pound for pound. And the, the lighter-ranked fighters don't get as much recognition as the heavyweights, but this is a fight that local fans want to go and see. The battle on the ground right now, Idaho winning with 88 total yards. The Wolfpack with just 29 this far in the first quarter. Vandals penalized back to their 11-yard line. Again, there's movement in the middle of the line. Joe Caspers jumps across. The right side of the Vandals' offensive line jumped that time prematurely. I think the biggest dis disadvantage right here for the Wolfpack is that they did not come in and see the confines of this stadium before they had an opportunity to play. Being on the road for the first time in four weeks and coming to a dome stadium, the first time you've been up here in three years, and the Wolfpack had wanted to uh, be here and get some revenge, you can see that... They're a little hesitant right here as far as what they've been doing in the first quarter defensively because of what had happened to them a couple of years ago. They need to get settled. If they had came and saw the confines of this building a little earlier, they might have been a little more settled at the start of this game. Chris Schneider, the strong guard on the right side, was the guy who moved, and he was penalized. Another five. Now the Vandals will have it first and 20. They're back at their seven-yard line. Nesmeyer will drop into the end zone to throw. Now scrambles around, grabbed, and he'll be sacked by Drejos back at the five-yard line. Mark Drayle is coming off his block. He and Caspers were there, but Mark will get the sack. This is the Wolfpack defense that we had come accustomed to seeing the first four games of the season. Steady on defense, across the defensive front. They're getting the penetration up front now. Drayhaus did a great job of contained rushing from his right defensive end position. George Caspers came up the middle. Drayhaus came back around on the fold when Nesmeyer vacated the pocket for the sack on the play. Nesmeyer actually will only lose one to the six-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the seven. Great spot by the official. He was down on the five. Yeah, he was second and 21 now. Nesmeyer again looking right side. Throws incomplete. He threw out there for Richardson, Curtis Richardson who had gone down about two steps and then turned out, and Nesmeyer didn't read it well and threw it about five feet wide. Bad read by Nesmeyer. They lined up in the trip formation right, the Idaho offense had, trying to run a clear out with the two inside receivers, basically a screen play. Throwing the ball to the wide out. That time Nesmeyer threw behind him, putting himself in a bad third down situation here. Wolfpack will go with five defensive backs about 90% of the time. This is one time when they'll go with six. Lackey is in. He is wide right the defensive side of it. Nesmeyer from his end zone will throw. Looking. Throws up the seam. Complete at the 30-yard line. That is Chris Taylor. Taylor was the man lined up on Lackey and Lackey couldn't keep him away from the ball. So Nesmeyer went a big hole. He needed 21. He will get it all the way out to the 34-yard line. Great play call that time by Nesmeyer. Lackey cannot allow Moore to have the inside position on the defense. Step Nesmeyer had all the time to observe the defense, looked it over. Moore was lined up to his left side, looked him off very well. Threw a perfect strike to him. He had inside position on Lackey. Lackey had to catch him from behind and bring him down because he was wide open in the middle of the field. No penetration by the defensive front. On a draw, Pierce with good running. Romano with the 40. At the 45, he's at midfield. Gets outside. Lackey is chasing him. And Lackey will run him out of bounds near the 35-yard line. The Vandals are picking apart the Wolfpack defense. 
maintain their time up the middle with the draw play. The Wolfpack defense is very untouched. Put themselves in great field position, had the Vandals back within their own 10-yard line. Great position that you like to operate from defensively. Now they've moved all the way down to the Wolfpack 38. The Wolfpack right here has to settle themselves defensively. They've given up big play after big play early here in the first quarter. Pierce on the carry, 28 yards. That is half of what he normally averages per ball game. He, now, he now has 61 on the afternoon. And he only had 10 last week. First and 10 at the pack, 38. Nesmeyer on the ground to Ronnie White. He slides along the line of scrimmage inside the 35. He'll get to about the 32-yard line. White started out left. He came back right side, and there Reggie Robinson was to make the hit. Cutback is what the, the Vandals running backs want to do today. They know that the Wolfpack has a great pursuing defense. That time, White started off to the left side of the formation, cut back against the flow, was able to pick up seven yards on the, on the run. The Wolfpack is going to have to un under-pursue just a little bit, slow down in their pursuit, and not overrun, allow the, the back to cut back underneath them. White will stay in, and remember, that name should be familiar. He was recruited originally to play for the Wolfpack. Nesmeyer to throw after a fake to White. Throws almost intercepted. The Wolfpack defensive players, Reggie Robinson and Xavier Carey, bumped into one another. X had a beat on it. He was there, and uh, Reggie came from nowhere and knocked the ball away. Xavier Carey that time broke off the, his, his, his man that he was covering, Casey Dunn. He had Dunn one-on-one -on -one over the middle. Nesmeyer had locked in out on the wide side of the field. And, he, and Reggie Robinson read it, made a break on the ball, and if not for the two defenders running each other, Xavier Carey and Reggie Robinson, Reggie Robinson had a chance to return that one for six. Holding is the call against Idaho. That will slow their offense temporarily as they'll be penalized 10 yards. The down will repeat. It'll still be second down. But at least the Wolfpack will slow that offense a little bit because Nesmeyer, again, uh, last week, his big problem, James, in the second half against Northern Iowa, he was intercepted three consecutive times. He just came a little unraveled last week in the second half. What the Wolfpack has gone to is a zone defense here in the secondary. Everybody has played Nesmeyer with a man-to-man -man coverage. He has recognized the zone. He's been able to find receivers running in the seam and get them open. Head coach Chris Alt with a worried look on his sideline. Idaho only leads 6-0, 3.05 to go here. In the first quarter, we have a flag down again. Drejos had jumped. He may have been drawn. We got movement in the offensive line. You had one of the offensive linemen pull his hands up off the ground, cause Drejos to come across the line of scrimmage. Dead ball foul. It. The, the referees will stop it when the offense moves first. Dead ball foul. Wolfpack gets another break Procedure right here. By the offense. I had talked uh, just a little bit ago about Ronnie White. He had been a recruited by the Wolfpack, and uh, two years ago it looked like he was going to be their number one back. The problem with Ronnie, he didn't like the books. No, he, he liked to skip class. When they, when they brought him in, they felt that... He could get the job done for the University of Nevada, but they found out that he was skipping the classwork and was more interested in just the field work. And if you're going to play football at the University of Nevada, you're going to have to go to class also. And Chris Alt just would not stand for that and felt that he should pursue his career elsewhere. Even as outstanding a back he is, Chris said, no, you got to wear down with the books. White fumbles, picks up the bouncing ball from the 40 yard line, and he chased on the sideline and run out of bounds. White that time, we have a very late flag. It looked like it was a face mask or a slap to the head, but White came through the line of scrimmage. He fumbled it and got the opportune bounce. It bounced right back up to him about waist high. He picked it up and continued on the sideline. Ronnie White kicked the ball twice. Actually, he hit it the first time and it came loose. He picked it up again and he was able to pick it up in stride. Perfect bounce from a football. And it got a late flag at the end of that run. The official from about 15 yards behind the plate probably threw it on a, uh, Reggie Robinson when he took him out of bounds because Reggie came over the top really hard with the forearm, and I think he's going to get him for a personal foul call on that. The only unfortunate thing for Robinson, he really didn't lay it. He kind of glanced it off the top of the helmet. It really wasn't a, a, a tremendous hit to the head, but again, the uh, official from behind saw the infraction and immediately threw the flag. And as intense a game as it is, you hate to see the yeah, officials play such an integral role in it, foul but they've been just as the involved in the game first as the players down. have, and they've thrown the flag on frequent occasions as here in the first quarter. Customary, you don't see this many flags in an entire game against the Wolfpack. Idaho will have the ball at the Pac-12 yard line, first and 10. We have 2.57 to go in the first quarter. The Vandals lead 6-0. Nevada been penalized 36 yards this afternoon. The, the Vandals in four penalties also, just 25. Casey Dunn in motion, starts towards the line of scrimmage, then sets up. They give the ball to Pierce, going left side, slices through a hole that I didn't think was there. He gets inside the 10-yard line to maybe the eight. 
Devin Pierce has done a tremendous job of running here, reading his blockers this afternoon. They, they've been running the trap play inside. The cutback has been there for Pierce and White when he's been in the game. That time, Pierce hit a seam that couldn't have been wide enough for a lay to get through and was able to pick up six yards on the carry. 69 yards so far this afternoon. We're still in the first quarter. Vandals with a second and six at the pack eight-yard line. Ball in the left hand. Nussmeyer again faking the throw, gives to Pierce, jitterbugging his way to the five-yard line. Devin Pierce started right, then went back left. Xavier Carey, the spy in the middle, came up and made the hit. Right now, Nesmeyer has the Wolfpack defense front off balance. They don't know whether to rush him or stay back waiting on the draw play. He's mixed it up so well against the Wolfpack defensive line. The, the substituting that the defense have done for the Wolfpack has not allowed the defense to get steady. The continuity is just not there yet. Two wide receivers make it three, will come right side on a third and three at the pack five yard line. Nesmeyer looking over the middle, throws at the goal line. Is it a catch or not? The officials haven't signaled anything. I think they know. He scooped that one off the turf. You can see that one clearly bounce on the turf. Great, great coverage up by Casey Dunn that time, doing a little slant over the middle. Great coverage. Nesmeyer was forced to get rid of it before he wanted to go. He dropped back. The pack came with a blitz up the middle. They brought Matt Clafton. Matt was just a step short of getting Nesmeyer before he was able to throw that one. Forced him to throw it early, though. Brock Marion with the coverage. So Thane Doyle on a fourth down and three yards to go from the pack five. We'll try the field goal. It'll be a 17-yarder. Or check that. It'll be a 22-yard field goal. Spotted at the 12. It's on the way. It is good. And the Vandals raise their lead to 9-0 with 138 to go here in the third quarter. The Wolfpack will get the ball. When we return to the Kitty Dome here in Moscow, Idaho, we'll be back in just one minute. Last year, Bill suffered chest pains. His wife took him to Washoe Medical Center, the area's leading hospital for cardiac care. There, heart expert Dr. Donald Spring diagnosed coronary heart disease, performed an angiogram, and treated Bill with balloon angioplasty. Bill may not understand all these procedures, but thanks to someone who does, he can still play the game that breaks his heart. Washoe Medical Center. When you know us, you'll choose us. to go here in the first quarter. Idaho has had all the momentum so far, James Curry, but they only lead 9-0. They've run 22 plays offensively, and they've come up with nine points out of that 22 plays. Wolfpack has to come up and stop this next series if they get the football. Thane Doyle, who just converted the field goal, will kick off. King and Reeves are deep. Brian will take it at the four-yard line once again. 10-15, looking for a seam. He's hit and goes down at about the 24-yard line. Ryan Reeves on the return. Last time he got it out to the 20 from the four-yard line, so give him a return of about 20 on this one. Williams, the backup defensive back out of Fresno, California, was the one to come down and bring Reeves down at, on that kickoff return. Ryan Reeves is going to have to run when he gets the ball, not wait for a hole to open, but be there when the hole opens. He is right now hesitating on his kick returns, which is not benefiting the Wolfpack. Idaho went 79 yards in 10 plays for their field goal. Gatlin will throw on first down from his own 24. Throws it out left for Singleton. Wide open. He kneels down and takes it at the 42-yard line. That was a perfect throw by Fred Gatlin. He had to throw it over the defense to awaiting Chris Singleton. He dropped that over two defenders. That time, the Wolfpack caught him in a two-man deep zone and was able to get a first down at it. Thane Doyle now 5 of 10 on the year, converting the 22-yard field goal to give the Vandals this 9-0 lead. The Wolfpack with their third possession this afternoon with a first down at their 42-yard line, trying to kick their offense in gear. Three wide receivers right. Fred Gatlin and Smith in the backfield. Flag is down. Smith with a carry at the 45 at midfield. He will go to the 48-yard line of Idaho, where Darren Taggett will make the stop. 
but let's see what the flag is. I believe it'll be against the Wolfpack, or will it not? We got an offside against the Vandals defense. They moved a little quick on the defensive line, and I think you're going to catch them offside. Find the Wolfpack still in very favorable field position if they turn down this penalty, probably with a second and one or so, one and a half. Talking about the Wolfpack front, let's uh, identify some of them for you. Shari Arport, Nice, the left tackle. Tony Edwards, the right tackle. Tom Rebeckis, the right guard. Alan Maxwell, the left guard. In the center is Mitch Baker. And right now, these guys have been the most steadiest part of the Wolfpack team in this early season. And they're going to have to come on track and start dominating this Idaho defensive front because these guys have gotten their ears pinned back, and they're coming after the quarterback. Right here, they're going to have to take control of this football game and start getting a surge on that offensive line. One ten left to go here in the first quarter. Idaho leading 9 nothing, but the Wolfpack mounting their best drive. Ryan Reeves in motion, comes left side. Gatlin on the ground to Smith. Noses forward. He got about a yard. That's about it front of the line looked like Billy Sims was the first to get a hand on it. Billy Sims right there in the middle of things. This Idaho defense is playing hard-nosed football. They're very inspired this afternoon and they're getting a great push up front and they just have not backed down to this Wolfpack. Coming in number one in the country sometimes puts you in a vulnerable position because everybody is gunning for you and being a conference game they're gunning for you even more. Taking a look at it that close on a third down maybe less than a yard to go for the first down. As the officials stretch it out. The last time the Wolfpack held. That's enough for a first down. It was just by inches. No, they got that one by a knob on the ball. It, it wasn't even an inch that time. We have had nine flags here in this first quarter. Less than a minute to go now with 46 seconds remaining. But this is what the Wolfpack needs. They need to mount consecutive first downs. They need to just establish a drive, not to try to get it all back in one play, but pick at it bit by bit. They have the type of offense that can score a lot of points in a hurry when needed, though. They go with their trip receivers right on the first down. A noisy kitty dome, and uh, the receivers may have trouble hearing Fred Gatlin. Gatlin, middle screen, complete the Reeves. He breaks the tackle to 45, the 40, trying to get outside to 35, 30. He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5, Wolfpack touchdown. Brian Reeves, great play and catch that time. Freddie Gatlin did an excellent job reading and drawing the defense. Brian Reeves in the trip formation was the third receiver in the formation. Drug across the middle, read the defense personally. Freddie Gatlin gave himself time to let the defensive line get penetration. Brian Reeves drug over the middle, broke the initial tackle. One of the linebackers stepped back, got an arm on him. Great blocks downfield. Some of the offensive linemen that got loose, but one of the receivers... I believe it was a tight end that got, got loose. Scott Benning, I believe, got a loose, got it blocked downfield on about the 25. Brian Reed scores a touchdown. Schwindinger will try to add the extra point out of the hole to Williamson. Good spot. Kick is on the way. It is good. We have a 9-7 ball game with 17 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Idaho on top by just a deuce, James Curry. Idaho is on top by a deuce, but the Wolfpack did something very important at the time. They did not make errors. They did not get penalties. They got themselves settled. I think the coaching staff brought them to the sideline, did a few talks, let them know, hey, we came out, we made some critical errors offensively and defensively. Let's go out and play the football we're capable of. James, a little comparison for you. Idaho went 75 yards for their touchdown. The Wolfpack just went 76. Great comparison right there. One yard's different, but the Wolfpack did something a little more important. They struck very quickly. They were patient offensively. Boom, the big play came. Freddie Gatlin to Brian Reeves. That tandem we've seen several times this year. That time struck. Got the Wolfpack right back within striking distance. When you get Reeves loose in the secondary on an artificial surface, they're just not going to bring him down. He looked inside, went outside, and then he was gone. Well, his jitterbugging style, that is a detriment to him on kick returns, that time became an asset to him as a pass receiver because he was able to elude a couple of defenders, stay in the open field, get to the sideline, take it up the sideline. Six points later, the Wolfpack were on the scoreboard. Ronnie White, along with Sanders, will be deep. I'll tell you, the Wolfpack would like to get the ball in Ronnie White's hands a couple times this afternoon because the coaching staff thinks he will fumble it two or three times. He's already fumbled it once. Well, they saw the one fumble that worked to his advantage, but also they need to see him touch the ball. Ronnie White is one of those players that has a lot of mixed momentum, adrenaline flowing through him right now. He wants to get back at the Wolfpack, but in wanting to do something so bad, you're prone to make mistakes. Nevada only took a minute 21 in four plays to go that 76 yards we mentioned. About a third of the time it took the, the Vandals to score on their last drive. Schwendinger will kick off. Let's see, how he, let's see if he has enough foot to get it in the end zone. Short kick, end over end. Sanders will come forward. He will take it at the 10-yard line. 15 at the 20. A seam at the 25. A flag is down. He will go down right at the 30-yard line, but we have a seam way down, a flag way downfield. 
Steve Bryant, I think, was clipped or he was pushed. He was clipped by Brian Wamsley, a backup linebacker at that time. Very clear open in the field. You had two officials standing right around. He was hitting the back, knocked to the turf because he had an open lane to make the tackle. The Wolfpack right now is playing what the Nevada Wolfpack we had expected to see when we arrived here at the QB Dome this afternoon. Right now they're playing very inspired, inspired emotional football here. It started out, as I said earlier, James, before the Pack scored, even though Idaho had all the momentum and everything on their side, they only led 9-0, and with the Pack coming back, it has evened things out. It's an even playing surface. You need to go to your opposing team's facility to get that intimidation factor off your back. They arrived here. It was the first time they saw the Dome in three years when they got here this afternoon. The honor of being here, especially Clip for the first time by players the ever team, playing in one of the first Dome teams. It's an awesome feeling. I got an opportunity to play in the one at Idaho State years ago in my career at the University of Nevada. And it was an odd feeling coming in. Fortunately enough, we had the type of team that could overcome that honors. And I think we're going to see that here this afternoon. James, the Wolfpack needs now, of course, with only 12 seconds remaining in the initial period, they need some kind of a turnover. They need, they need the big play from the defense to step back up and do what they're accustomed to because they are a plus nine in the takeover ratio here. Nussmeyer on a quick count, gives to Pierce, coming right side. Oh. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage and drilled down. Matt Clapton came across and put a shoulder into Devin Pierce. Mike Rogers was also there. Great penetration by Mike Rogers, able to get him around the legs, had him stop for Matt Clapton. Matt cleaned him up on that. That is the end of the first quarter. Idaho leading 9-7 here at the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, Idaho. We'll return with a second quarter. But the, the crowd reacting as the teams go to the opposite end of the field. Devin Pierce uh, one yard on that last carry at the end of the first quarter, so it'll be second and nine but they still mark the ball, James, at the 10-yard line. Great surge, though, by the defensive line. They need the big plays. That right there could be the start of the big plays that they expect from the defensive side of the ball. You need that great surge. They have to slow down this Vandals offensive line. Nevada has not been getting the surge in the first quarter that they expected to get from the defensive line. Maybe that is the start of what they need to come. Idaho with the first play here in the second quarter and a two-point lead on top 9-7. Nesmeyer studying the defense as the Wolfpack backs off. Takes the dive back at his goal line. He's being chased by Steve Bryant. Rolls out and throws complete to Yo Murphy at the 22-yard line. That time, Nesmeyer, who doesn't scramble well, was forced out of the pocket, ran to his left, and found a wide open Yo Murphy. Great job of eluding the rush by Nesmeyer. Steve Bryant came from his outside linebacker position on a fold technique. He started outside came back underneath the defensive end, came clean. Nesmeyer was able to step out to the left side, being a left-handed quarterback to his advantage, and roll and find Yo Murphy upfield around the 22-yard line for the first down on the play. They will mark it officially at the 23, first and 10. Again, Pierce running up the middle will get near the 25. Bryant that time again folding back inside. The Wolfpack is doing a lot of stunts up front with their defensive line and linebackers. Bryant got into the backfield, was able to trip up Pierce before he could get a head of steam going, not allowing him to get his feet on him and for only a two-and-a-half, three-yard gain that time. Second and seven. Pierce with 92 yards, 72 yards, and 11 carries this afternoon. Our statistician, Paul Stewart, keeping us well informed. Nesmar, three-step drop, looking right side, throws, complete to Casey Dunn. Dunn is run out of bounds by Brock Marion. He will have enough for the first down out near the 35-yard line. That is an assignment that Marion will draw all afternoon, shadowing Casey Dunn. And Casey Dunn has had an ex exceptional year so far coming into this game with 33 receptions for 441 yards and three touchdowns. He had a big game last week with 10 receptions also, but coming in running a simple wheel route to the outside that time, letting the outside receiver clear, Dunn doing an out behind him, able to pick up another first down. Walter Saunders is the wide man to the left side. Three receivers on that side. Nesmeyer again on the draw. will go up the middle. Out over the 40-yard line. I believe that's Ronnie White. It is White who's back in the lineup. He'll get it to the 41. Gain of about six. It'll be second and four. White did an excellent job of hitting the hole. What you have to notice about these Idaho running backs is that they're very quick off the ball, both Pierce and White. They hit the, the hole very well. They're up in there before that initial surge by the defensive line can get to them. They're into the linebackers and secondary. We'll pack with their nickel defense. They have Lackey back in. He is the wide man picking up Saunders once again. Motion man is done. Goes towards the line of scrimmage. Now starts back out left. 
on the ground to go to White, trying to go wide right, goes by four and dump it, and Brock Marion will have to come over and drag him down near the Wolfpack 45-yard line. Duckett had an arm tackle, but White ran right through it. That time, arm tackles are not going to bring down many good backs over the year. Corey Duckett had bad tackling technique that time. They came with the simple draw play, brought the offensive lineman from the counter side of the, the formation. White got outside, cut inside Corey Duckett, did not break down. Brock Mary has been very busy this afternoon, had to bring him down after another first down on that play. 13 away to go before halftime. Our score, Idaho 9, the Wolfpack 7. First and 10 at the Pack 46-yard line. Nesmeyer to throw after the fake. Throws along the sideline, incomplete. Reggie Robinson lowers the boot on Yo Murphy. Yo Murphy gets up and goes back to the huddle, but Reggie Robinson came over after the ball was overthrown, and he put a shoulder into Murphy. Reggie Robinson did what you should do as a defensive back. Nesmeyer had all the time in the world. The defensive line is not getting the pressure on the quarterback that they should. Reggie Robinson had Yo Murphy lined up, and he yoed him on the sideline, left him laying there. But Joe jumped back up, went to the huddle trying to see it didn't hurt me, but he had to feel that one. Reggie Robinson is a big defensive back, about 6'4", 210 pounds, and leveled him. Second and 10 after the incompletion. Again, done in motion to the line of scrimmage. Nesmeyer on a straight drop back. Little swing pass complete to White on the right side. He's grabbed by Dor Duckett. About a two-yard gain, and Forey Duckett this time will make the sure unassisted tackle. That time, Duckett did what you expect a defensive back to do. You expect defensive backs to be your best tacklers on the field. He came up, went through the proper breakdown technique, got his feet squared up under him, waited on White to make the move. Then he attacked him, brought him down for a minimal gain on the plate. Great open field tackle by the secondary and Duckett. Nesmeyer with an even 100 yards, 6 of 10 passing here in the first half. They give him three on that one. It's third and seven from the Pack 43-yard line. A no-back backfield. Four wide receivers. Three to the left side, one right. A blitz up the middle. Matt Clafton, he's picked up a low throw. Incomplete intended for Casey Dunn. That's the last time Dunn did that. He got by Brock Marion for a 32-yard gain, but Nussmeyer with not enough time to get it to him. But Andre Howard that time came from a blitz from his left linebacker position, was able to get around the corner, get a hand on the back of Nussmeyer before he had time to deliver that ball because Dunn was wide open, but Andre Howard got his hand up, big rush by the defense, and the Wolfpack puts him in a punting situation. Idaho will punt for the first time this afternoon. Tom Sugg gets a low snap. He hangs it high. The spiral going to the sideline and taken out of bounds by Brock Marion. That's the first time Brock has been back in double safety this year. William Lackey and Marion were back there. We'll take a timeout with 12.04 to go here in the second quarter. Idaho still leading 9-7. We return. The Wolfpack will have the ball. They'll go back on offense in just one minute. Um, and while we're away, the officials uh, had signaled too many men on the field for the Wolfpack. 12 on the punt. So Idaho will get the penalty, but more importantly, they'll maintain possession of the ball. It'll give them a first down at the Wolfpack 29-yard line. And for the second time this afternoon, the Wolfpack have been caught with 12 defenders on the field. Not very characteristic of this Wolfpack team. Nevada's really going to have to find a, a solution to all these penalties they've had this afternoon. Idaho with a big lift emotionally. Leading by just two, now with a chance to tack on more. It came up with the defensive stopper that they need only to turn the ball back over. Nesmeyer will give it on the ground. A double reverse. Taylor coming right side. He's got a blocker in front, but he will be banged out of bounds by Tony Amatia and Forey Duckett inside the 25-yard uh, line, probably about the 23. Great pursuit that time by Amatia, following the reverse as it came, as it formed, going back from the short side of the field to the wide side. That time, great pursuit by the Wolfpack defense to slow him down, not allow him to get more than five yards on the plate. So John Smith with a little razzle-dazzle in his offensive package. They started left and came back right with a double reverse. Got five on it, second and five at the pack 24. Wolfpack shows blitz. They will come from the outside. White will get the carry going wide left at the 20, 15, 10, and he will go down at the five-yard line. Xavier Carey makes the stop. Came over and made White cut in. Otherwise, White would have been standing in the end zone. Just a simple off tackle play, and that's one of the problems when you run a zone defense is that you get the defensive backs running away with their backs to the ball. That time they came back with the counter to the outside. Got a great team coming off the left side of the offensive formation. Had Xavier carried a chase position, if not for Brock Marion being able to turn around off this receiver, making White cut back in, it might have been another touchdown for the Vandals. They have it first and goal from the Pack five yard line. White on the ground, trying to go wide left. He's grabbed, spins at the five, cuts 
touchdown. Coming back with the same play, the Vandals felt that they had saw something the last time, which allowed the big gain and was White coming off the left tackle. That time came with the same play again. Corey Duncan, who had missed the tackle earlier, that time did not wrap up on White at the five. White spent his five for the touchdown, put the Vandals back up on top by eight points again. James, maybe the biggest play of this first half would be the, the penalty on the punt. That may be the biggest one. It is. The illegal participation allowed him to keep the ball and keep the drive alive. The extra point attempt from Thane Doyle. This one, he does convert. So with 11.33, but go before halftime, Idaho has jumped out now to a 16-7 to lead. The Wolfpack hoping to get the ball when they return. They will take the kick from Idaho. We'll be back once again in just one minute. Yep. Well, James Curry, the last time Idaho scored with 3.18 to go in the first quarter, the Wolfpack marched 76 yards. This time the Vandals went 93 yards in almost four minutes and capped off by the Ron White three-yard run. They have put together some serious yardage on their past two drives, over 160 yards combined on their last two scoring drives. The Wolfpack cannot allow that. Coming in here, the Wolfpack is one of the top-ranked teams in the country defensively, third overall, and this afternoon they've been pushed up and down the field by this Idaho offense. Reeves and King are the deep men. King about the six-yard line. Reeves back near the goal line, expecting the Thane Doyle kick. End over end, it is coming Reeves' way. He will come all the way up to the 11, the 15, 20, got a line in front of him, gets outside at the 25, the 30, and he will be dragged down near his own 35-yard line. That time, Brian Reeves did what was expected of a kick return, a run straight up field, find the seam, let your blocks occur in front of him. That time, he read his blockers perfectly. He just ran up the field. They forced people to miss him, and they got the ball out to the 35-yard line. About a 25-yard return. Shanta Williams, uh, a backup defensive back, made the stop. The pack back on offense at their own 35-yard line. Trailing 16-7 over the number 14 ranked in the 1AA Idaho Vandals. Gatlin again maybe changing at the line of scrimmage. The receivers flash the signal to one another as Gatlin drops straight back to throw. Left side on a turn at midfield, out of bounds. The catch is made, but it's out of bounds. Chris Singleton tight roping the sideline could not stay in. Very questionable call that time by the official. Singleton looked to have both feet in bounds as he went up. He lined up in his left receiver formation. Gatlin did an exceptional job of looking him off. Fired a strike down the left side of the field. Singleton seemed to have the ball in bounds. Falling out of bounds, official on top of it said he did not have the ball when he went out of bounds. Second and 10, Wolfpack still at their 35. Singleton this time will line up wide on the right side. One of three receivers to the right side of the ball. That is the wide side of the field. Oh, movement in the line for the Wolfpack. Tony Edwards just pulling back a little too soon. Going against Jeff Robinson. And Edwards, the big right tackle, leaned back a little bit, pulled his hand up, and the Wolfpack will be flagged five yards. Got that momentum rocking backwards and was able to stop him on that. And uh, Tony Edwards, not, a, not an easy man to miss. Well, playing on the ground has been the forte for the Wolfpack over the years. They have only 19 yards so far. Idaho, who's not been a ground team, racking up 156 yards in just a little bit over a quarter. Well, Idaho has uh, had a very strong running game. You know, you speak so much about their passing attack with Nesmeyer, but their running game has been the difference this afternoon in this contest. Again, second down. It's second and 15 for the Pack. Back at their 30. Gatlin again to throw. Throws over the middle. His intended receiver, Joe King, had slipped down. Taggart had dropped back into coverage, but King, starting down and then cutting the middle, had fallen. And so Gatlin again threw it wisely where no one could catch it to the surface. Well, that time, the Wolfpack had to feel very fortunate that uh, Gatlin did not get there with picked off because he threw that one right into the middle of everything. The Wolfpack defense came into this game today only allowing 283 yards of uh, offense. This afternoon, Idaho was picking up on 48 yards here in the first half. Nevada looking for their first third down conversion in third, three opportunities. Gatlin hit as he throws. It'll be caught by Eric Smith at the 30, the line of scrimmage, and that's where he'll go down. And it was Jeff Robinson, the big defensive end, that you don't want to get stirred up in Idaho, coming in, hitting Freddie Gatlin before you get his arm in complete swing motion, hitting him right as he was trying to get the ball over the top. Very fortunate it wasn't picked off. Smith lined up his left defensive end position, beat Tony Edwards around the corner, came through freely, and was able to get in Freddie Gatlin's face. Eric Smith was able to bring that one in, been better off just knocking it to the ground. Right at the line of scrimmage, no gain, so it's still fourth down. 
Schwindinger will punt to a single safety, Saunders. Back near his 35. He calls for the fair catch and will take it at the 33. Tom Matter was bearing down on him. The long snapper, Tom Matter, was coming quickly downfield and Saunders wisely taking the fair catch. So at 10.35 to go before halftime, Idaho on a fourth, third down situation. They found some way to give them the ball back. They need to come up big here, not allow them to get any more points here in the first, first half. Idaho at their own 45. First and 10. Nussmeyer faking the dive. Rolls out left. Rolls a great catch. A great catch by Aliyima Daly at midfield. Daly stretching out. He was on his way down when he made the grab. Daly just a tremendous reception. Daly's the tight end in the Idaho offense. That time, Nesmeyer came with a naked bootleg, rolled out. He's a left-handed quarterback, so rolling out to the left is such a natural thing for him. Daly just slow off the line of scrimmage, drug off, made a one-handed stab at the 50-yard line. Just great catch and concentration by Daly. No way you can defense that. No, that, the only one guy's going to get that, and that's the receiver. At midfield, it is second and five. We have 8.54 to go in the first half. On a delay, again, Pierce finding a way through the line of scrimmage. Finally, he is stopped by Matt Clafton who got him uh, shoulder pad high and forced him backward. Big Joe Cash was penetration again in the middle by Joe. Joe has done that on a couple occasions here in the first half this afternoon. Been able to achieve great penetration. Tripped up Pierce, not able to keep his feet under him. Matt Clafton caught him in mid-stride and was able to stop him short of the first down. John L. Smith, the head coach for Idaho, across the way in his uh, Jerry Glanville look-alike outfit, all in black, roaming the sidelines. His team with a third and three. Nesmeyer retreating the throw. Throws right side. Casey Dunn had it on his fingertips. He was very, very close to the first down. Maybe had it by a yard, but the juggling catch would not come down in Dunn's hand. When Nesmeyer doesn't plan as a quarterback, he floats the ball. He is not able to get enough on the ball for it to be a perfect strike to the receiver. That time he floated it out to Dunn. Dunn had run a great route and out pattern to the, to the right side of the formation. Nesmeyer did not plant, threw off his back foot and floated it out and Dunn was not able to come up with it. Tom Sugg, who's been averaging just under 44 yards a punt, will do it again. Right footer with a bad kick off the side of his foot will bounce and roll to Reeves at the 9, the 15. Looking for running room over the 20. He almost was high stepping it. Darren Taggett got him. Taggett got him at the 22 yard line, but Reeves again breaking that initial charge momentarily looked like he had some running room. Well, that's what you expect from your punt returners when they touch the ball. It's the head straight upfield. That time, Reeves came straight back upfield with the punt return on his earlier kickoff. He tried to jitterbug a little bit. That time, picked up great yardage on the return. James, I know the respect you have for Bobby Bowden right now. They're in a little bit of trouble against Syracuse. Well, Syracuse has been a giant killer this year, and they're ahead 14-7 in the first quarter. But don't count that Florida State team out. They can strike in so many ways. They have so many trick plays. At their 22-yard line, first and 10 pass. Smith tiptoeing to the line of scrimmage. He'll be thrown for a loss. Back near the 20-yard line, he will lose two as Robert Monk, the middle inside linebacker, got him. Eric Smith is a good ball player, but he is not the type of ball player that you want to run counter plays with or sweep. He is a straight ahead runner. You have a young runner, Dietrich Holmes, who has tremendous quickness that you might want to insert in your lineup when you're running misdirection plays. They have just taken Smith out, but it'll not be Holmes, James. It'll be Keith Washington who's in there. Second and 12, back at their 20-yard line. Ball on the right hash. Three receivers in the ball game. Two of them wide left. Gatlin throw. He has time. He wants to go up top for Singleton. Singleton is bumped a couple times, but they'll say it'll be incidental contact. Brandon Millsap had the coverage, and he would not let Singleton buy him. Millsap got a, did an exceptional job of getting away with really pass interference that time because he had bumped Singleton a couple times. Singleton was a wide man to the right side of the formation. Gallon had plenty of time through the ball, aired it out down the field. Singleton was coming to the middle of the formation. Bill Sapp knocked him off his route. Rest call, incidental contact. Standard operating procedure for Idaho and their fans is on third down, on third down conversions. They make a lot of noise. They're doing it again. And it's rocking in the key to dome this afternoon. Wolfpack has not converted the third down. Gatlin's throw. Steps up in the pocket. He's grabbed. Edwards has his hands full this afternoon. He is going to have to get back out of his stance a little quicker than what he's doing. He's a little slow off the ball. Jeff Robinson has turned the corner on a couple occasions this afternoon, able to get around to Freddie Gallon. That time had him by his throwing shoulder, did not, not allow his throwing motion to come through. Pass fell incomplete. James, if Edwards can't handle him, they're going to have to leave a back in there to help out. They're going to have to do something, widen him out in his stance one. Schwindinger will punt. On a fourth and 12, the pack did not move from their 20-yard line. Schwindinger, good kick, a good spiral. Saunders retreating way back to his 29-yard line. 
Three wide right at the 30, turns the corner and goes on the sideline. We have a clip. We have a flag down as Saunders made the turn of the corner. I think Harry Jackson was the player for the Wolfpack. It was clipped. Buster Hinkman, a backup defensive back, did not get squared around on Jackson that time when he was coming down. Jackson had excellent field position. That time he was hit in the back by Hinkman. Hinkman came down and got his did not get it completely squared, knocked him off from the left from his left side and able to return it to get up the field, but it's going to be brought back with the clip call. Harry Paul Jackson, number 13, was the guy downfield with Tom Matter. They were both there, and Jackson uh, was in front of the defensive man. We have holding had nothing to on the do, return. But clip the 10-yard penalty. The first it's thing the call is holding, but he really clipped him. He, he clipped him. He did not get around in front of uh, Jackson that time. Jackson, great job of hustle downfield, and that's what you need from your kick return team. You have to get guys down covered, and a great kick by Swindinger that time. Excellent hang time, allowing Matter and Jackson to get down, not allowing them time to set up their blocking scheme. Schwindinger, you said a great kick, James. 51 yards for the Dinger. And the greatest part about that 51 yards, a lot of time you kick that on the line, he had the hang time. 7.07 to go in the second quarter. Idaho still leading 16-7. to Three wide receivers left for the Vandals. At their own 25-yard line, first and 10. Yes, my three-step drop. Looks left, now looks right. A little pooch pass. He threw it out for Ali Alima Daly. Daly didn't see it coming, and it threw it went over his head incomplete. That time they were trying to set up a screen pass the whole way, but the Wolfpack was blitzing on the situation and did not allow the backs to come through the line of scrimmage. Nesmeyer trying to throw it off to a secondary man. Daly, the tight end, just shot put it over his head, did not get anything on the pass. Glad you could join us this afternoon, wherever you are, across the Wolfpack Radio Network or looking on in on KRNV. We're glad you're with us. Nesmeyer to throw again. The ball banged at the line of scrimmage, or at the Joe Caspers put a hand up and blocked it as Nesmeyer trying to get rid of it, and Caspers went after he and Buddy were there, and George Buddy was looking for interception number two, James Curry. Great penetration that time by the Wolfpack defensive the line. The Idaho Vandals were trying to run an underneath screen pattern with one of the receivers. Joe Caspers got great penetration and has done on a couple, several occasions here in the first half, was able to get his big hands up 6-7 in stature without his hands in the air, and batted that one straight up, almost an interception, interception for Nevada's defense. Nevada with uh, six defensive backs. Idaho converting three of seven this afternoon. Pressure up the middle. Clapton chasing Nesmeyer. Grabs him as he throws. And they will not convert the first down as Matt Clapton pushes Nesmeyer's legs away from him. And then Clapton with some conversation to offensive linemen. But Nesmeyer not able to outrun Matt Clapton. And the Vandals will have to punt. So they have three downs. They do not move the ball in 10 yards, and they'll punt again. Coming with the blitz that time, straight up the middle, Matt Clapton untouched. The coaching staff had talked about that. Matt was able to get to Nesmeyer before he could get settled. Nesmeyer must feel very fortunate that he did not call, get called for grounding on that because that was 10 yards away from any receiver. Tom Sugg will punt again. All the panels were moving, and they will throw flags and stop it because Sugg got a whale of a kickoff. Prior to that conversion, the, the Vandals were only three of seven. Now they're four of eight, three of eight on third down conversion. The Wolfpack defense seemed to be awakening here. They got rid of some of the pregame jitters. They've been able to come up with a couple of big plays in the last series. James, they're not letting uh, happen today what happened two years ago. They're not letting the game get away from them in the first half. They're staying within striking distance. If you stay close, the Wolfpack can strike very quickly offensively. The one touchdown they had this afternoon came after they had set it up with a couple of stable plays, you know, good, good easy plays, allowing the offense to get in good field position. And just the left wing on the on the punt moved that last time. Sugg will do it again. Oh, a great punt by Sugg. He really hangs it up. Reeves retreating. Watches it go out of bounds at the 19-yard line. What a punt by Tom Sugg. He really got his foot into it. Sugg has been averaging 44 yards a punt. That one he nailed and will put the Wolfpack back near their 20-yard line. We'll return after this timeout. Idaho leading 16 to seven. We'll be back and we'll have the ball just shy of their 20 yard line with 6.44 left to go until halftime. A 16 to seven game. Idaho has led from the start. They scored on their opening drive. The Wolfpack looking for something here. Well, the Wolfpack's offensive line is gonna have, have to give Gatlin some time to throw the football here. Gatlin on the ground to Holmes coming wide right, trying to turn the corner straight off the man. He'll be dragged down after about a two yard gain. Great job.
job of stretching out the, the running play that time. Sheridan May, the cornerback, was able to string it out to the sideline, not allowing Dedrick Holmes to turn it up. The pack that time changed backfields, coming with Dedrick Holmes, a young freshman, trying to run a sweep to their right, able to get the guard out in front of him, but that time the defense just was not being able to push off the ball, got Dedrick Holmes at the line of scrimmage, maybe a one-yard gain on the play. Sheridan May pulling in. He is a natural freshman and uh, a defensive back in the future for Idaho, but right now, He's got the weight of the world on his shoulders as Gatlin will throw. Looking, a kneeling reception by Singleton at the 35-yard line. Singleton again making the break, and then Gatlin delivering the ball a little bit late, so Singleton had to wait and wait for it. Great pressure that time, though, by the Idaho defensive front, but a great catch by Singleton, making sure that he made the reception, not trying to turn up field, make a run before he got the ball. Freddie Gatlin was forced out of the pocket, found Singleton, who had gone down and set down at the 35-yard line. Great play for the Wolfpack's offense. Gatlin this afternoon, 6 of 12 for 95 yards. That one good for 14 at a first down. At their own 35, on the right hash, the pack operating. With a single back in the backfield, Holmes, he'll get the call from the right side behind a block. Get out to the 39-yard line. Shari R. Portnish had pulled and come across teams and gave the block to Holmes to let him cut back and get the yardage. Holmes is the type of back who could cut back inside the infield inside of the blocks, and that time Holmes was able to pick up a good four yard line, four yards from the line of scrimmage before Monk, the inside linebacker, was able to bring him down. But Holmes might be the answer to their ground woes this afternoon because he is the quickest back they have here in the stadium this afternoon for the Wolfpack. He got four, second and six at their own 39. Quick count, Gatlin drops back, looks left side, throws on a block, intercepted! Intercepted by Terry Green! He's at the 20, the 15, 10, high touchdown! The Vandals with a big strike in the secondary, an interception by Terry Reed on the return for the touchdown. Great play that time by the Vandals defense. Sheridan May is actually the freshman deep in the back. He made the great play early on a running play against Andrew Cole. The pass around in the turn of the game. He made a great lead, set on the route, jumped around Freddie Gallon and locked in on King, the receiver, picked it off, returned it back the other direction for the touchdown. Big play by the Vandal defense. The Wolfpack's offense in total disarray this afternoon here. It was not 33 green, you're right. It was Sheridan May, 32. The true freshman. Timeout taken by Idaho before the extra point attempt, leading 22 to 7 with 5.02 to go before halftime. What happened was the defense was so exuberant that time. Jeff Robinson, the big defensive lineman who comes in on extra points, did not get back on the field, and they did not want to be a man short on this extra point because it's so critical being up 22 to 7. Want to get all the points they can on the Wolfpack here. Well, that may be the play of the first half. At halftime, we're going to send it back to Kurt Siglin on our TV side in Reno. On the radio side, we're going to give a trip away to Palm Springs. So stay tuned, and that's the play of the first half, the interception by Sheridan May and the return of 43 yards. We'll give you an opportunity to call in and win a trip to Palm Springs on the TV side of it. We will go back to Kurt Siglin and Mike McCone. On that situation, Joe King did not sell the route at all. He went down. Locked in, turned around, did not step back to the ball. Freddie Gatlin threw the ball where it should have been. King did not come back to it. It was returned the opposite direction for a touchdown. Thane Doyle will try to make it a 23-7 game. Right footer, easy kick end over in. He splits the uprights. And that is our score with 5.02 to go before halftime. Idaho on top, 23-7 over the Wolfpack. And the Pack with an opportunity just moments ago to maybe get back in the ball game. And they had a pass by Fred Gatlin Pilford, and suddenly Sheridan May had turned this thing around. Big play by the freshman. Two big plays in that series. Just when the pack seems that they're going to get back in the game, Nevada finds a way to shoot himself in the foot, as they did that time. We had stopped the, the Vandals early on the drive. They had illegal participation when they forced him into a punting situation. That time had the ball, had a decent drive started out to the 35-yard line. Bad mistake that time by the quarterback and the receiver miscommunication return the other way for a touchdown james if you're on the sideline for the wolfpack coaching staff do you bring chris vargas in for a series or two to let fred gatlin see what's going on you might want to do that but if we have an overall problem when you when you look at the nevada offense it's not just the quarterback situation the offensive line is not doing the normal steady job that they have done all season they have not allowed gatlin the time in the pocket that he needs to throw the ball he has been forced out of the pocket on several situations the running game has not clicked at all today he is, the running backs have just not been hitting the hole. The defense, the secondary, I've never seen them in such disarray in the two years that I've been in the box. The Wolfpack has got to do something to turn it around because it seems like the Vandal coaching staff knows what's coming. 
They're just sitting back and waiting. So let's see if Nevada can get something going on this series. They've had one drive this afternoon of 76 yards. Doyle with a short end over end kick. Reeves will come forward, take it at the 17 yard line. 20, 25, trying to get wide left. He turns the corner at the 30, 35, still running in traffic at the 40, and he'll go down at the 46 yard line. So poor kick coverage by the Vandals. It gives Ryan Reeves a chance to get it out near midfield. Well, the short kickoff also did not allow his coverage team time to get downfield. That is Doyle, the kicker for the Vandals, allowing Brian Reeves and the Wolfpack to get excellent field position up to the 46 yard line, their best field position of the day to start a drive. Right here is where they really need to settle themselves with a little less than five minutes to go in the first half. They need some stabilization in their offensive front. That might be what they need, Billy Brady. Gatlin to throw on first down. He's chased out the pocket. A little swing pass, complete to Holmes. He'll go down on the great catch and down at the 47, a gain of just a yard. John Searn, deep in the line, and came straight up the middle that time, was able to pressure Freddie Gatlin. The deep defensive line has done a tremendous job this afternoon getting in on Gatlin, uh, forcing him to throw the ball before, before he wanted to. Diedrich Holmes, a great reception, falling over before he could get his legs up under him. If not, he might have gone for a first down on that play. A gain of just one. It is second and nine. The ball in the right hash at the pack 47-yard line. Gatlin again the throw. Over the middle, complete. At the Vandal 45, Reeves will go down there. Robert Monk made the stop. Well, James, there are a lot of happy people in Atlanta. The Braves have tomahawked the Dodgers. The Braves have won the pennant. They beat the Astros today 5-2. to two. The Giants beat the Dodgers, so the Braves win the National League West. That's a great thing for baseball. From worst to first in one year, that, that's an exceptional job by the Atlanta Braves. They have to be given a lot of praise for the season that they've had. they made a lot of offseason acquisitions, brought in some key players within their lineup, and it turned their system around. And they're going to be hosting the Olympics in 96. We had a player down, Sharon, the, the Sherman, the defensive lineman, who was falling downfield on pursuit and that time got hit up by one of his own linemen and was hurt on the play, and he's down with some assistance from his uh, staff. Looked like he might have an abdominal problem, maybe in the rib area, possibly a knee. Now they've moved down to the knee. But hopefully it's nothing serious because he's had an exceptional afternoon here, and uh, you hate to see any player down, but that's one of the vulnerabilities of the AstroTurf is that you will see leg injuries. James, I know that you're a sports fan of all kinds, and I know you love to go to boxing events. We will not get back for the fall brawl because our plane doesn't leave Lewis until 6 o'clock tonight, and the championship is at 7. But who are you picking? Sweet Pea Whitaker, 26-1, and who's the champ, or Jorge Paez? Well, you know, that's a fight that can go either way. Paez is a gamer. He's one of those fighters that do anything he can to win. Cornell Whitaker, one of the more pure boxers of the sport. He, he is a showman when he's in the ring. He's a tactical fighter. Paez is what you want to call one of those guys who hit you with everything, the elbows and all. He comes with every kind of antic. But both of them are true fighters, and they both are in there to win. It will be a great bout with their, whichever one wins this evening. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not going to get back to see it. I understand there are still tickets available, so people, the opening bout is at 5 o'clock, the championship at 7. You want, might want to get to the convention center as the fall brawl taking place in Reno tonight. John Sermon was the injured player, the 6'2", 263-pound junior, helped to the sideline. Third and one for the pack at the Vandal 45-yard line. 23-7, Idaho leads at University of Nevada. On the ground, Holmes up the middle, hit at the line, he struggles forward. He Tiger got, got him at the line of scrimmage. He should have enough for the first down. He got enough for the first down with that second effort. Diedrich Holmes, a young freshman, that's what you like to see, the leg drive. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage, but Diedrich Holmes reloaded his legs and got another surge out of him and should have had enough for the first down. The officials brought that back a little poor on the spot, but they did give him the first down. That's what the Wolfpack has to do. They have to get those surges. They have to be consistent. In tough situations, they have to come up with the big play. The clock now with 3.50 and started back in motion on the first down. It's not an enemy of the Wolfpack, but it's certainly not an ally here late in the second quarter. They must come up with something here. They need some more points on the scoreboard The University of Nevada here in the first half. Gatlin with three wide receivers left. Has not gone to his tight end. Benning's in the pattern. He goes there. A completion of Benning at the 35, at the 30, at the 29-yard line. James, I just didn't have enough time to say it, but I knew they were going to look for Benning soon. Well, Scott Benning is the weapon last year that killed the Vandals when they played. He was the player who came up with the big catch at the end of the game, last play of the game, forced the game in overtime. Scott Benning, from his tight end formation on the right side of the formation, went down, ran a set route about 10 yards off the formation, opened in the seam of the zone. Gatlin found him for the first down. At the 29 of Idaho. Gatlin again to throw. Looking right side for Reeves on a turn. He's got it and out of bounds. He'll be, go out at about the 17. 
all kinds of room being given by Brandon Millsap on that right defensive side. Idaho has settled back in a two deep zone, which allows the Wolfpack to throw the underneath patterns. And that's what happened that time, is Gatlin sent Reeves out on an out pattern about 12 yards down off the formation. Reeves did a great square out, ran a precision route. Gatlin threw a strike to him. The Freddie Gatlin that you expect to see in the pocket. This time on first down, they'll send three wide receivers left. Again, Gatlin on a delay to Holmes, running up the middle. He spins. He's still on his feet. He'll get close to the 10-yard line before they gang tackle him and push him down. What the Wolfpack is doing right now is going on a quick count. The last three plays in this series, they've gone on a quick count. They've gotten a rhythm cadence. Freddie Gatlin is very predictable once he gets it into the floor of a game. Now the pack coaching staff has him going on a quick count the last three plays, and they've picked up excellent yardage. They've got Washington in the lineup now for Holmes. Keith Washington played a little bit earlier. Singleton draws single coverage to the right side. Reeves is in the slot left. Gatlin at second and four at the 11-yard line, straight back to throw. Looking over the middle, completes at the five-yard line. We have a flag down as the ball was thrown in the area where it may draw holding for the Wolfpack. We're Let's find get, out. We're going to get a holding penalty on the middle of the Wolfpack offensive line. They seem to be locked up. One of the defensive linemen, Matt Goshon, the nose guard for the University of Idaho, had come straight up the middle, and, and the Wolfpack had nothing to do but to hold him. And it, I think it was might have been the left guard that got tied up with him, Alan Maxwell, because he had put a tremendous job of rush right up the middle, and uh, Brian Reeves made a great reception at the five, but all for not, that one's going to be brought back. James, they have moved Maxwell. They've got Werbeckis on the left side and Branca on the right side, flanking Mitch Baker, the center. It will be a hold. No, they came from the left side of the offensive line so, line, so that was Tommy Rebeccas who's moved in at Maxwell's left guard position. That'll cost the path 10. The line of scrimmage was the 11. holding by the offense. And, and it was the 11. They marked it back to the 23. I'm not sure I understand that. Well, they generally call it from the position of the hole and where he was standing on the line, You're position right. of the field, and that's where they mark it off from, so that's the reason why the ball is being brought back to the 23. It'll be second and 14, Wolfpack. 23 to 7 is our score in case you joined us late here on our simulcast on the Wolfpack Radio Network or on KRNV in Reno. Clock moving with 2.15 to go here in the second quarter. Gatlin looking over the defense. Will go back to throw. Good protection over the middle. Throws to his tight end, Benning. Benning banged down at about the 15. You know, I've really been impressed with Monk, the linebacker for Idaho. He has been all over the field, very active in the pass and the run defense this afternoon for the Vandals defense. That time he brought Benning down. Benning has been open for the most part of the afternoon. They've gone to him here in this last series a couple times, but he has been open. He is a weapon that could be a very integral part of the rest of this contest this afternoon. Well, the decibel level here at the Kibbe Dome goes up, so that'll tell you it is third down, third and eight for the pack at the Vandal 15-yard line. Again, Gatlin to throw. Steps up. He's going to be sacked back near the 20-yard line. They got across to him. Jeff Robinson with a giant defensive play. Jeff Robinson all afternoon has been after Freddie Gatlin. Tony Edwards has to find a way to keep him off that corner. He has done a tremendous job around in the corner from his left defensive end position. They have not been able to get him down. He came. He rounded the corner. Very deep drop by Freddie Gatlin. Robinson came all the way around, sort of like Greg Haugen of Boise State did last year against the Pack. But that time was covered sack by the secondary. Schwendinger will try a field goal from the 27, add 10 to the end zone, a 37-yard attempt that is straight on. It is down. Dinger has it up. It's long enough, end over end, and it is good. So the Wolfpack has tacked on three more with 47 seconds left to go before halftime. Idaho is on top, 23 to 10. Very desperately needed points by the Wolfpack. They needed to get a touchdown out of the University of Nevada has not been steady all year, but Swindiger with a great stroke that time, placement on the turf, very easy for a kicker to kick off the natural surface. You don't have the give of grass where you might slip or anything, and he nailed that one right through the middle of the uprights. The dinger this year is 9 of 10 in field goal attempts, and you just can't get much better. No, he's if at... If you made the other one, of course, it would be 100%, but uh, you don't have 100% accuracy all the time. 90% for a kicker on field goals is very, very accepted by any coaching staff. And to be the big question mark coming into the season, who was going to be the kicker? Swin Digger did not step forward to the last week prior to the season, but has done an exceptional job since winning the job. Well, the Dinger, who just converted the field goal, will kick off. Idaho with their defensive unit. 
at the 50-yard line, lining up. Uh, it isn't a time where you try something funny and go on side. You just put it as deep as you can. You get it as deep as you can, because with 47 seconds left in the first half, you don't want to give Idaho another opportunity to score here in the first half. You have to get the ball deep in their territory, hold them down defensively, regroup, come out for the second half. The batter's going to get the ball at the start of the second half. Maybe they can settle their offense in the halftime, get back on track with what their original game plan was, get all this intimidation factor and the all being in the Kiwi Dome here this afternoon out of the way. The thing for Idaho, they have not turned it over in the first half, and that's been a critical factor. The they, Wolfpack gave up a touchdown on a turnover. They played a solid first half of defense. John L. Smith has to feel very proud of his troop the way they performed here in the first half. Ronnie White, along with Saunders, will be deep. As Schwindinger again will do the honors. End over end. It'll come short to White at the seven yard line, coming left side at the 20. White steps behind it, ball, behind a tackle. He's over the 30, 35, 40, and finally spun down by Urban Cutright at the 41 yard line. What a return by Ronnie White. Ronnie White bounced off several tacklers that time on that return. Great field position for this potent Idaho offensive tack. Ronnie White received the ball on a short kickoff from Swindigger, didn't get it deep, round about the 10 yard line, came up the left side of the formation, got a couple of tremendous blocks in, in the wall right there, missed a couple of tackles, cut back inside the Wolfpack, very shoveling tackling on their specialty teams that have been so potent all year long. 34 yard return, let's see if Nesmeyer wants more if he goes deep right away. Three step drop, looking right side, still looking, throwing. Uh, diving catch by Alalima Daly. He will go down, though, only at the 47-yard line. I think he fell on the ball and might have knocked the wind out of himself because Nesmeyer stretched him out and he made a great diving effort, but pulling the ball underneath him as he fell, he might have fallen on it and knocked the wind out of his body. James, if he didn't, it's a great acting performance because it stops the clock with 29 seconds. Yeah, it, it, it does stop the clock. That That is a plus for the Idaho offense because they get a chance to regroup look over what Nevada has come out with defensively here in this series and see if they can exploit it. Because he had plenty of time sitting in the pocket. The Wolfpack has just not gotten a pass rush on him all afternoon. But just one of those balls where he might have fallen on the ball, one of those catches where he might have fallen on the ball and knocked the wind out of him. So the Wolfpack cannot allow any points in this drive by this Idaho offense. They need to stop him, get the momentum in the second half. They are not out of this game by any means, being down by 13 points. That's less than two touchdowns. And this is a team that is averaging 55 points a game coming into this afternoon's contest. James, the key to the first half is the running game. The passing is almost dead even. Idaho is thrown for 117 yards and Nevada for 140 yards. So it's a, a little bit better for the Wolfpack. But the running game, Idaho has run for a total of 154 yards. The Wolfpack for just 24. And Idaho came into this game only averaging 126 yards a game rushing. And here they have 154 in the first half. Very unaccustomed for their offense to be so potent on the ground. Devin Pierce had 72 in the first quarter. Nesmeyer will throw. Throwing along the sideline for Dunn. He may have thrown it away. They had bracketed Dunn. Xavier Carey was the deep man. The, the underneath man was Brock Marion. And it was a tough throw for Nesmeyer. He may have thrown it away to stop the clock. Well, this secondary had a lot to prove after coming here three years ago as freshmen and being picked apart by John Freeze. John Freeze played every down that he played against him and probably was recognized as the greatest quarterback to play in the Big Sky. But he was one of those quarterbacks that played every down. It's time for redemption here for the Wolfpack secondary. Three wide receivers left on the ground. They go up the middle. That is, is it wide or Pierce? It is Pierce who will get it across midfield to the Wolfpack 49-yard line. A little short of the first down. Uh, and they're stopping the clock. With nine seconds to go, gives us a chance to remind our simulcast audience that on the radio side, stay with us. We'll be giving away a trip to Palm Springs during halftime. And on the television side, we'll be going back to Kurt Siegel and Mike McClone in Reno. So stick around. It's a lot of halftime wherever you're listening or viewing the Wolfpack football. Well, they came with a simple draw play that last time, something that's been very effective against the Wolfpack. Because in their rush lane, the defensive linemen have been going to the outside. They've been leaving the middle open, expecting the linebacker to be able to stop the run. But they've been able to get one of the offensive linemen off on Matt Clapton for a good part of the first half. They're going to have to find a way to play some gap cancellation in the second half and not allow the linebackers on Matt Clapton if they expect to stop the running game because Matt has been steady all year, but they've given up so many yards on the ground here in the first half they have to find a way to stop that in the second. 
The other thing, James, that uh, we're watching Nesmeyer last year and again this year, going deep is not one of his fortes. Now, with nine seconds left to go, maybe he wants to go off top and get a touchdown or get something in field goal range, but he floats it when he goes deep. He is more the, of a possession passer. He is not a home passer where he can hump the ball downfield. He does not have the arm of a Freddie Gatlin nor Chris Vargas. Both of those guys can thread the ball any place on the field. He likes to throw a lot of outs in his game. At midfield, Nesmeyer drops. Now he will draw and run. The quarterback draw will slide down at the 44-yard line, trying to stop the clock or get a reset. The clock is stopped with four. I'm not sure why. Did he make the first down? He got the first down on that. And on, on college football, the clock automatically stops when the ball is down on the first down. Now they're going to call the timeout and try to regroup for this one last play here in the half. With four seconds left to go, that's what they will do. Again at halftime, we'll go back to Kurt Siglin in Reno on KRNB. In uh, our halftime show, we'll have a news and sports update for you. And you could win a trip to Palm Springs. The Three way? nights and four days. James, can I go with you if you win? Palm Springs, uh, where is that, in the desert? Sure. You probably need to work on your team. I probably do. So the Vandals trying to come up with one big play. They lead by 13 and about to go into halftime with only four ticks of the clock remaining. James, do you go deep? Do you go deep, yeah. Now they're tripping Palm Springs if they have a pool. They I don't swim. You don't swim. I don't swim. No, this, this is one of those plays where you want to line up three receivers to one side of the formation to go deep. And I've, I've never really liked that, but that's become a, a, a norm in the coaching industry is that you put three players on one side of the formation, put three on one side, one on the single side, throw back to the single receiver. Michigan, number nine in the country, leading Iowa 7-0. That'll stir a lot of hearts. Four seconds left to go. Three wide receivers left. Nesmeyer to throw. He wants to hang it up. He's going to go deep in the end zone. Lackey is there, and Lackey will intercept it over the shoulder. That will end the first half as Nesmeyer, not enough arm to hang it high and anybody to run under it. So both teams will go to the locker room. With Idaho leading, they have led from the start. They won the toss and took the opening kick. And they lead 23 to 10 here at halftime. We'll return after this timeout. 151 to 22, just 22 yards on the ground for the Wolfpack. It's been a problem for them all season long, and today it has definitely been a problem for them. Yeah. But doing this year is a lot of kick returning. It's a, it's a part of the offense that they had, have not had a lot of game experience on, and they've had more work here in the first half than they would have had in the last two ball games in returning kicks. So Brian Reeves might be losing a little bit in his legs here in this game, returning so many kicks. James, I'd ask Chris all if he'd go with a no-huddle offense. So far this afternoon, he has not. He has got to do something to, to change the tempo and the pace. We'll see if he does it here in the third quarter. On the ground, the Wolfpack Holmes coming right side. He's over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Damon Taggart made the stop. Well, the Wolfpack worked so well, if you recall, late in the second half, they went with the hurry-up offensive scheme. They were going on the quick count, coming up, catching the Vandals defense, sitting back, waiting on them. And now, if they go back to the cadence count, they get sort of a, a hookup with Freddie Gatlin, and they get within his rhythm cadence and get off on the ball very well from a defensive line. Darrell King is in the ball game. He is wide left on a second and six. They're out at their own 37. Again to home. Up the middle. Good trap block. He's over the 40, 45. Gets outside at midfield. He's at the 40. At the 30, 25, the 20. Straight arms a man, and he'll go out of bounds near the 10-yard line. That's what you have, they've expected from Diedrich Holmes, the young freshman. Diedrich Holmes had burst on the scene early in a couple of games ago. This time they ran a simple counterplay, came up, he cut it back as Idaho backs have been doing against the flow, burst straight up the middle, was able to break out to the right side of the field, get towards the sideline before he was able to be pulled down on an angle by the defensive backs. Great explosion by Diedrich Holmes. They need more big plays like that than the Nevada Wolfpack's offense does. The team seems to be fired up on the sideline now. A 50-yard run by Holmes. Millsap made the stop. Nevada with two tight ends in their offense. They go to Washington, trying to go wide right. He spins off a tackle, and he'll be dragged down by the shirt. He'll get inside the 10-yard line. Robert Monk, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Monk has been very active all afternoon from his middle linebacker position. But the Wolfpack needs to be, feel very pleased with the, full, with the field position that they have established here early in the first half. This is the type of drives that Wolfpack fans have become accustomed to seeing moving down the field steadily right here in great field position at the 12-yard line with a second and eight. I said inside the 10, it is at the 12. 
second and near nine to go for a first down. Gatlin retreating to throw. He throws as he's hit as he throws, incomplete. It went off with the hands of Reeves. And then Monk had a hand on it. Boy, it was dangerous as Gatlin didn't put any zing on it, but he was hit just as he delivered. John Shearman, the defensive lineman that had to be helped off the field in the first half, is back in, the ha in here in the second half. And he was the player to put all the pressure in the world on Freddie Gatlin that time. Beating Allen Maxwell at his left guard position was able to get in on Gatlin, forced him to throw the ball behind Reeves. Very fortunate the Wolfpack has to feel, but not having that one picked off. Another third down. The crowd on their feet, yelling and clapping. Third and nine at the 12. Gatlin looking. Arm fake. He's bounced around. He rolls out right, looking to throw back at the 30. Still scrambling. He throws in the end zone. It is complete. Touchdown, Joe King. What a play. And look, a flag has just gone down. But it's a dead ball foul. It's after the touchdown. Fred Gatlin with an amazing right arm. Hung it up and hung it long for Joe King. That should be a dead ball foul. Freddie Gatlin with all the athleticism in the world that you would expect from a player. He was pressured. He had the ball knocked out of his hand by the defensive lineman. Freddie Gatlin had enough presence of mind to grab the ball in the air. As the ball, it came loose from his hand. Great penetration. The ball came loose. He picked it up, wheeled around, came back out towards the sideline. Pressure again from the defensive line and was able to throw the ball for the touchdown to Joe King completely across field and they threw a holding penalty on the play. The, play. the flag came after the ball had been caught by Joe King in the end zone for the touchdown. James, that is the most blatant ripoff of a touchdown I have ever seen. The officiating here this afternoon has been very suspect. Uh, Big Sky officials, you know, it's hard to call, but you, to see a call like that with the great athletic effort. We have illegal forward, two, illegal forward pass by the offense. Lost it down, he forced down. That's what the call was. Uh, James, illegal forward pass. Now I can believe that. The hold, I couldn't believe. The illegal forward pass did not take place because as Freddie Gatlin was cocking his arm, the ball was knocked out of his arm by one of the linemen. He caught the ball. It is not a pass. It is a, a, full, a fumble that is caught within the air. If it's not a pass, unless the pass goes forward, the pass did not go forward. He caught the ball. He had to turn around and catch the ball in flight. We'll uh, talk more about that later. It'll be a 47-yard field goal attempt from Rich Swinging here. End over end, he, it won't get there. It'll be off to the left, and Swindinger will miss. With 13.06 to go, Idaho will take over the ball. They will take over, and Idaho leads 23 to 10. So the Vandals will trot back on the field, but James, you can't say enough about the throw by Fred Gatlin. He came out, he was hit as he threw it. The, the power of his right arm to go across field, first of all, you don't you tell a quarterback never to throw that ball, and yet he got it to Joe King. Well, to call an illegal forward pass on it when the ball has not gone forward, it's gone behind the quarterback, is a very questionable call from the officials. We'll try to sort that out for you. We'll find out more information later if we can. Idaho at their own 31st and 10. Nussmeyer goes on the ground. That is Ronnie White. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. That's all. Nick Harker made the stop on him. But Roger Pelham and uh, Joe Caspers were in the backfield looking for the running back. Tremendous hit that time by Nick Harker. Ste step him up from his outside linebacker position to stop Ronnie White before he could really get rolling for about a half-yard gain on the play. The defense really needs to step to the forefront right here. They were pretty riddled in the first half. They need to make their presence shown here early in the second. So no gain on the carry by White. Second and 10, still at their 30-yard line. The motion man is Casey Dunn. Nesmeyer gives to White in the backfield. He's grabbed by Caspers. Caspers was just sorting out offensive linemen. He was pushing them one way and the other, looking for the ball carrier. Then he found White. Joe Caspers that time did what you're supposed to do against a counteraction. Not look for the crackback block, but get off between the middle of the linemen, make some disruption in the backfield. He knocked the offensive lineman back into White in the backfield, and by the time he got through throwing offensive linemen aside, he was able to bring White down for a three-yard loss on the play. That's interesting. We have a Montana Eastern Washington score at three all. It was seven to nothing at one time. Nesmeyer looking to throw right side on the comeback. Oh, it's knocked away by Lackey at the last second. But Richardson was open across the way at the 40-yard line, and Lackey reaching out an arm, either deflected 
or got it out of the line of sight of Richardson because he couldn't hang on. Looked like Lackey might have been taking, taking that one back the other way. Nesmeyer has to feel very fortunate that he didn't have that one picked off because Lackey made a tremendous jump on the ball, and Nesmeyer does not have a strong arm when throwing that out pattern. Idaho State uh, really rolling this afternoon. They're on top of NAU. Reeves runs forward at the 36 to take the punt, starts up field to 40, bouncing outside, and finally dragged down at the 42-yard line. Great one-arm tackle that time by uh, Brian Wamsley, the line of reserve linebacker on Reeves in open field. 23 to 10. We are still in the third quarter with a lot of time remaining, 11-39. Our score is the same as it was at halftime. Idaho leading 23 to 10. Nevada missing a 47-yard field goal attempt. Well, the Atlanta Braves are the champions of the NL West teams. They came from the bottom just like the Minnesota Twins did. Great for sports and athletics. Uh, professional baseball is at an all-time high with the Braves. Gatlin to throw on first down. Looking wide open, Benning, the tight end at the 40 of the Vandals, breaks the tackle, and he'll go down at the 31. Scott Benning ran through the tackle of Millsap, and Monk had to get back to finally bring him down. An identical play to, as similar as the one in the first half with Scott Benning in the right formation of the offense. He makes a short initial block, and he comes straight down the seam in the zone, finds an open spot. Gatlin spots him on the sideline, and Scott Benning turns it up to pick up an extra seven yards after making the reception. James, the key thing is Fred Gatlin had looked left and the last second turned and looked at Benning. And the offensive line also gave him time. At the 32-yard line of Idaho, Nevada with the ball. First down, Holmes gets the call, trying to go left. He gets outside at the 30. Duke's man goes inside. Yeah. He'll be inside the 20 before being knocked out of bounds at about the 19. Dedrick Holmes is right now stepping to the forefront in the Nevada running game. Dedrick Holmes did an exceptional job running the counter trap that time, dipping inside, breaking that back to the outside, able to turn the corner. Great job of blocking outside by the receivers. Almost a clip, but Brian Reese pulled off, let the defensive back make his own mistake, allowing Dedrick Holmes to get to the outside, down to the 19-yard line for the first down. Holmes with seven carries and 80 yards this afternoon. Great outing for the freshman. Joe King is the wide man to the right side. Two tight ends for the pass. On the ground, Holmes again running up the middle. Good running room. He's at the 10-yard line. Keith Washington. It's Washington, number 25, not Holmes. Who's got a break. By Keith Washington, coming with the counter trap that time. Maxwell did a tremendous job pulling from his left guard position, get kick out on Robinson, the defensive end. Edwards had let him come upfield. Keith Washington exploded through the seam for an eight-yard burst on the play. By Keith Washington and Allen Maxwell. Three at the Vandal, 11 yards. The Pack has had one touchdown taken away this afternoon here in the third quarter. Yeah, comes back right. He drags Robinson with him. Six-yard line. Jeff Robinson from behind making the stop. Keith should have enough for the first down. Keith burst out on the scene a couple weeks ago in his first game with the Wolfpack, scoring two touchdowns in his first game back after being slowed at the start of the season by injuries. The last two runs by Keith Washington have been very exceptional. This last one, a power run straight up the middle to get the first down. He comes to the sideline, and Holmes is back in. First and goal for the Wolfpack from the six-yard line. Holmes. Bursting on the right side, he'll get inside the five to maybe the four-yard line. Mitch Baker was over there to try to pin a man inside. Whipping him out with the block, we'll get it to the four, James. What the Wolfpack has done on this drive also is kept the ball away from the Idaho offense. They're sitting on the sideline, they're getting cool, and they're working the defense. They're pushing them downfield. They have not spent this much time on the field in any series this afternoon. Well, Ron Stevenson, the commissioner, said it and during halftime. We were talking to him. He thought the Wolfpack team was wearing down to Vandals. He may be very right. They're just coming out playing good, hard-nosed, smash face football here in the second half. Goal to go from the four-yard line. King, the wide man right. Reeves is in the slot. Holmes will get the call. Trying to turn the corner right. At the five, he's grabbed, and he's run out of bounds. So Nevada will come up now with a third down, third and goal to go from about the five-yard line. Terry Green, a Southwold cornerback, coming out, out, forcing Dietrich Holmes out of bounds, trying to run a sweep off tackle to the right side of formation. Green did an exceptional job coming up, closing the gap between he and Holmes, forcing him out of bounds with maybe a loss of a half yard on the plate. Puts the Wolfpack in a third and five on the five. Need the big play here. The Wolfpack needs points desperately right here. They need to get it within a touchdown. Line. Gatlin, the throw, looking 
right side in the corner for Singleton. Knocked away at the last second. Good defensive play. Dowland threw it a little soft, and Millsap got a hand on it and knocked it away. Great defensive play by Millsap that time. Gatlin got too much air under the ball, and the ball floated. Millsap had time to recover in the right corner of the end zone because Singleton had gone down, lining up in the right side of the formation, had got behind the secondary. Gatlin just floated the ball. Millsap made a great break on it, got one hand up, batted it away. Swindinger on to try another field goal attempt. So the Dinger has a... 22-yarder earlier. He'll try to duplicate that effort now. Good snap. The hold is down. The kick is uh, hit the bar and will roll into the end zone. Idaho will pick it up and Idaho will return it, but it won't matter. That is only on the extra point. The field goal attempt by the Dinger hits the bar and won't go through. Nevada yet to get a big break this afternoon to turn this game around. The ball is dead instantly after hitting the goal post on an extra point or a field goal attempt. That time, Nevada had done an admirable job of driving downfield only to come up again without any points. Two drives, two great drives here in the, second, in the third quarter. No points, two missed field goals. Right now, the Wolfpack has to feel a little snake bitten here. Defensively, they cannot let down. They have to keep straight, playing strong football on the defensive side. James, in every game, the teams get a swing of momentum. It goes both ways. The pack has yet to firmly establish theirs this afternoon. They have to stay aggressive, though. Nussmeyer from his 20-yard line, looking, throws left side, complete the Murphy. Murphy is out of bounds at the 31. And we got a late flag. I think we're going to get a tripping call on the offensive line here. It came in really late, but we had one of the offensive linemen, number 76, coming in with a leg whip, and I think that's what was called against the Idaho Vandals offensive line. Well, Joe Casper's down on the field for the Wolfpack is celebrating, so holding is the call. And we've got a happy listener, James, Tony Vitale. He's going to Palm Springs. Vitale who called and had the right play of the, the uh, first half, so he's going on. Congratulations, Tony. Congratulations. What, what we had, there were great penetration by Joe Caspers right up the middle, and he was drugged down to the ground by one of the offensive linemen, there, and he was caught that time. The center, Spellman, drugged big Joe Caspers to the ground, and you got two, six, seven individuals the offense, fighting there, and you're not going to miss that. Too many officials should not miss a play like that. Line of scrimmage was the 20. So evidently he held them right at the line of scrimmage because uh, they marked it at the 10. Well, it, it was a quick grab, but, you know, big play for the Wolfpack defense either way because he had gotten a first down on the pass play, but this drives him back to a second and 20. My first point 20. is, James, the last time the Wolfpack got a holding call was a 13-yard penalty. Yeah. First and 20 at the 10-yard line, their own 20, or their own 10. On the option, the pitch to White running wide right. He cuts back and will be banged forward to near the 14-yard line. White was actually hit about the 11, but the pursuit of the Wolfpack knocked him forward to the 14. Well, great great ground coverage that time by the Wolfpack defense interior. They pursued inside out very well. Turn in very good that time by the cornerback. Brock Mary, an exceptional job of coming up, forcing White to cut back inside. The pursuit from the back end with Matt Clapton leading the charge was able to bring him down for a minimal gain on the play. It's close to five, so it'll be second and near 15 to go for a first down. At their own 15. Nussmeyer all the way at quarterback. Fakes the dive. He rolls, looks, throws over the middle. It's dropped by Dunn. It was behind Casey Dunn. And he couldn't hang on as Nussmeyer really, that was the hardest ball he's thrown all afternoon. But James, what's, it looks apparent to me, and I, I'm not sure, but Brock Marion, I think has been beating, he's been beaten all afternoon by Casey Dunn. He's been chasing Casey Dunn all afternoon. That time Casey Dunn had read him on a slant route to the inside. Brock is locking on to Nesmeyer too much, the quarterback, watching his eyes around field, but, and Casey Dunn has just been running free, and that time he ran free, if not for the bad pass by Nesmeyer, would have been another completion right there. Nesmeyer has gone soft, James. He's only completed one of the last nine, and that was good for just six yards. Well, Brock has been in a situation all year where he really hasn't been challenged. Last year, he had kind of a rough season. He had a decent season, not the greatest. This year, people have looked away from him. This is his first true challenge all year, and he has not come to the call yet. He is going to have to step to the forefront. He's great against the run here this afternoon, but he's been beaten bad a couple of times in pass routes. The Wolfpack came in with a plus nine in turnovers. They gave it up by interception. That cost him a touchdown. They intercepted once, but it was the end of the first half, and it meant nothing. Murphy will come wide left. Richardson is wide to the right side. Lackey, the guy who got the interception, is guarding him. Nussmeyer will throw underneath. That is complete. Near the 20-yard line, Dunn will get it all the way out to about the 25. 
going to be five yards short of the first down. Three of nine on third down conversions going into that play and being stopped short. The Wolfpack defense still has that surge that they came out with here in the second half. You know, Idaho is dropping back, trying to throw the short underneath pass, hoping that Dunn can get some open room to run around. That time he tried to cut back underneath and let the pursuit over pursuit, but the Wolfpack was able to break down and bring him down five yards short of the first down. Tom Sugg, who had a giant punt in the first half, is back to do it again. This one a low kick. Reeves comes forward, then takes it over the shoulder, looking to run, and now turns it outside. It will go down just about where he caught it, the 37 or 8-yard line. Sugg earlier had a 61-yard punt. That one good for 39 yards. Idaho leads 23-10. We'll be back. Ball game, and the Wolfpack hasn't had a lot to yell about here in the second half, but there is still plenty of time, and they have proven that they've been able to move the ball, especially here in the second half on the ground. But they need to put it in the end zone. Just moving it up and down the field between the 20s is not going to do you any good. No, it isn't. Gatlin will throw on first down. Has time. Throws it. Perfectly thrown. Complete to Brian Reeves, and he's hit immediately at the 48-yard line. But Gatlin had some touch on that ball. The Wolfpack has found something in, in, the, in the secondary of the Vandals. They've been able to come down the right side of the formation and set about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. This time with Brian Reeves, very good call by the officials, and I called him out of bounds on their reception, uh, and find an opening. And Scott Benning has been there a couple times, and now Brian Reeves. They need to keep looking at that. Notice the protection, James. The offensive front is giving uh, Gatlin here in the second half. Well, they've gone max protection with the two tight ends. Wide receivers on both sides. Flag is down. Gatlin throws over the middle, complete to the tight end, Benning. Benning looking for running room is dragged down at the 37-yard line. We got a flag at the line of scrimmage. Somebody was off sides. I think Reeves left a little too soon. But great play that time by Scott Benning. It's on the Vandals. Went down, ran, ran right over the middle. Scott Benning, the tight end has been open for the most part. He just came straight down in the seam, set in the middle of the field, 10 yards down the line down the field. Freddie Gatlin hit him with a perfect strike for the first down to keep the drive alive. This is what the Wolfpack can do. They can throw the ball against this Vandal defense. This is their weak point. They ran the ball to set up the pass at the start of the second half here. They've not had any problems when they've been passing the ball. It's when they left that and started running. Gatlin has 196 yards, James. He has completed 14 of 23 attempts. 10 Idaho leads the Wolfpack with a first down at the Vandal 37. They have been on that side of midfield almost all of this third quarter. Holmes on a delay, trying to go up the right side. We'll get it near the 35. John Sermon made the stop along with Robinson. It's great to establish a running game when you're in a football contest, but what the Wolfpack has done all well all this season is pass the ball, and it's what they've done well here at the start of the second half. They've come out and they've thrown the ball freely. Idaho has had problems defensing. If they're sitting back in a two-deep zone where the underneath routes are open, everything in, within the 7 to 12-yard range has been wide open for the Wolfpack. They have to keep exploiting that. On a second and eight, Washington back in the backfield for Holmes, who gets a breather. Reeves is wide right. King is left. Again, Gatlin to throw. Looking for Reeves. He can't grab it in the crowd. Reeves had gone down and run a post pattern at about the 15-yard line. Gatlin put some mustard on it, and Reeves just couldn't come up with it. Gatlin tried to force that one a little bit. The Vandals came out with double coverage on Reeves, who had lined up in the right side of the formation, and had gone down to run a slant pattern about 15 yards downfield. Scott Benning, the tight end, was sitting wide open on the 25. They neglected to cover him again. Another big third down for Nevada. Third and eight at the Vandal 35. Gatlin to throw. Protection. Steps up in the pocket. Throws complete to Joe King, who turns and goes to the 20-yard line. King, a little hook down in the middle, found a seam, and Damon Taggart had to come back and make the stop. Joe King did an exceptional job that time, lining up in the left side of the formation. Went down, Freddie Gatlin looked him off, then looked back to the right. Freddie K uh, Joe King had come in and run that little button hook. Buster Hickman had grabbed him around the ankles because he had broke that one back to the outside and might have got into the end zone. Nevada converts a third down at the 20 of Idaho. It's first and 10. On the ground, Washington looking left. He's tripped up, and he'll fall short at the 20-yard line. The ball... The ball may get to the 20, but that's all. Kyle Russell inserted as a backup defensive line that time, got in a, a hand on Keith Washington's ankle, but the Wolfpack has done a tremendous job in throwing the football. Then they keep trying to come back with the passing game. They're not going to try to confuse the Idaho defense that much. Nevada has to stick with what they do well, and what they do well this year is pass the football. Washington lost the yard. Well, they call it right at the 10, but that's a generous spot because he really went down at the 11-yard line. 
Gatlin retreats the throw, looking right side, throws over the middle, almost intercepted. I thought it was going to be picked off. Gatlin hung it up. He wanted Reeves to go up and get it, but they had double coverage on him. He had locked on Brian Reeves. Joe King had went behind the secondary, snuck in behind the secondary. They'd ran a dual formation receivers from the right side. Joe King had got behind the secondary. Freddie Gatlin had locked in on Brian Reeves. Just a very poor play execution by Freddie Gatlin. They're going to have to come up with a big play here on third down. They need to look at the tight end over the middle. He will be wide open. Clock stop with 5.08 to go. Fred Gatlin has been running more this year than in previous years. I wonder if they have the quarterback draw in. King is the wide man right. Gatlin retreats the throw. Steps up. Throws a bullet. Complete at the 10-yard line. King still fighting for yardage, and they stand him up. He never does go down. Now, finally, Millsap throws him down, but I don't see a flag. Well, he made it to the nine, which he has enough for the first down on the plate. But the officials have to step in and break that up. They're, they're, they're blowing the whistles and allowing them to be aggressive defensively. Freddie Gatlin with a great strike. Drop back. Locked in on Joe King all the way. Ran that little slant route. But the smart thing by King on that play is he went down and got enough yardage for the first down. He did not bring himself up short when he broke off his route to keep the drive alive. It is first and goal from the 10-yard line with 4.50 to go in the third quarter. Idaho leading 23-10. Gatlin to throw. Throws a little swing out of the backfield to Washington. Will he get in? He does. Score a touchdown. Great drive by the Wolfpack to get, get this one in for the touchdown. They'd been down three times before, two times prior to this, came up short on field goals. One short, one hit the goal post. This time, Freddie Gatlin did an excellent job, exceptional job, sent Keith Washington out of, back on a, out of the backfield on a circle route. Keith caught the ball at the five. Great leg drive and determination to push himself forward into the end zone for the touchdown, pull the Wolfpack within seven. That is his first passing touchdown. Washington has two running touchdowns earlier this year. Schwindinger will try to add the extra. Williamson puts it down. Dinger puts it up. It is good. We have a 23-17 ball game with 4.41 left to go. Still in the third quarter, Nevada making a run back. And this one isn't over by a long shot. We'll return to the Kibbe Dome. We'll be back in just one minute. The other thing, James, we were commenting uh, about during that timeout, even though it was under three minutes, the Idaho defense seemed to be worn down on that series. They've had take, they've taken a lot of blows here in the third quarter. They've been on the field an exceptional amount of time. The Idaho offense has not gained a first down here in the third quarter. Their, wolf, their defense have had to do a lot of work against this Wolfpack's offense, something they hadn't expected. Devin Pierce is the wide receiver left with a no-back backfield. Three wide receivers right. At their 25-yard line, Nussmeyer will throw. Throwing a fly, it is incomplete as Ali Alima Daly, who had left in the first half, covered by Forey Duckett. He had left in the first half with a hip pointer. He pulled Duckett away from the ball. And Daly gets up limping that time. Daly had to become a defender on that great inside position, and that's what you expect from your defensive backs. To play, let the sideline be your aid also. Make an extra defensive man out of him. Duckett did that. He shielded Daly to the inside, forced him to try to come to the ball, to fight for him to get the ball. Daly had to become a defender on the play. Idaho Vandals have not had a big reception over 10 yards since uh, early in the first half. On the ground, Pierce trying to hurdle the defense. He will get a yard or two at most. And George Buddy, that name that we haven't called a lot this afternoon, got a tremendous surge that time. And George is a little fired up. He's slapping heads and hands going on. Got a tremendous surge across the defensive line that time. Did an excellent job. Made Pierce try to hurdle him in the backfield. The rest of the defense was waiting on it. James Idaho, one play away from putting their defense back out on the field. And they're a little tired at this moment. The defense is sitting on the sideline, hanging their head, hoping that the offense can get a first down. Third and nine. Big play for Nussmeyer and the offense. 23 to 17, Idaho leads the Wolfpack. Nussmeyer to throw, great protection in the pocket. Now steps up, he wants to scramble. He's going to be hit by Harker near the 30-yard line. And Nussmeyer has come a little unsettled here in the second half. He is not sure what he's doing, nor his receivers are doing. The Wolfpack secondary has rolled up their coverage. They've come into cover two, a combo zone man-to-man. -man. Zone, manning it right off the ball, then dropping into the zone, and he has not been able to recognize that yet, and he's forced him to, they forced him to run with the football. That's what Kenny Mizell told me earlier. He said, I want to play as much zone as I possibly can. They haven't seen it. Ten-man front for the pack. Sugg will punt. He does. Off the side of his foot, the spiral will go to Reeves at the 28. 
at the 30, got a seam. He's at the 40, broke the tackle, trying to get outside at midfield. He will go out of bounds near the Idaho 45-yard line. Sugg, Tom Sugg, the punter, ran him out. And that's what is expected of Brian Reeves as a punt returner, that is to take the ball straight up field. And that's what he did. He came up, got an exceptional block from Xavier Carey, and took it up and brought it to the outside and was able to get the first down. We will be back in one minute. Well, James Curry, the offense was all on the side of Idaho in the first half. In the second half, it's just the converse. Nevada with 172 yards, Idaho with 17, and the scoreboard is changing dramatically. Quite simple, the last week for the Vandals. They came out and fell apart in the third quarter of last week's contest. The Wolfpack is on track. They're playing exceptionally well here in the third quarter. Seem to have momentum at their back. First and 10, and Idaho's 45. Gatlin runs up. He wants to throw a fly. Darrell King tripped over the feet of Millsap, but incidental contact. King was looking at the ball. We have flags back at midfield. And I think the Wolfpack offensive line, somebody is going to be called for holding. It's in the area of holding, and this one's going to be uh, brought back a few yards. But exceptional throw that time by Freddie Gallon. He stepped up inside the pressure, which is what he should do. They're coming with a roundhouse rush. The defensive ends are getting upfield in a hurry, trying to force the Freddie Gatlin up in the pocket. That time he stepped up in the scene, but he overthrew the receiver King down the right sideline, but it was brought, would have been brought back with a holding penalty anyway. The Wolfpack has the exception holding middle by the offense. And then you're penalty. The line, the first down. Up all the yard is here on this one play, but you have three plays to pick up some yards. James, I'm surprised that Gatlin didn't run. He had room to run on the right side. It, it is, you know, because he's run so well this year when he's had an opportunity to run. And that time he just threw it. Herman beat up on BMI today. That's a team that went back play in the playoffs last year, and they're always tough. Nevada will have it again first down, but 26 yards to go. Holmes on a delay. Runs into the defensive man. He ran into his blocker. He ran into Tony Edwards. Had he gone outside, he had plenty of running room. But a good play call that way. Anyway, by the Wolfpack, you mix up this Vandals defensive rush. They've got their ears bent back, knowing they have you in a first and 20 situation. You know they're going to come with an all-out rush. Great call with the draw that time, trying to get Dedrick Holmes, who's had an exceptional third quarter here, upfield. That time he picked up about six yards. Not a bad situation. Holmes with 88 yards on the afternoon. Second and long for the pass. Gatlin looking underneath, complete to his tight end, Benning. Benning shaking a tackle, shaking a second one, still falling along the surface. He will get across midfield to the 47 or 8 yard line. The tight end playing against a two-man deep zone defense that Idaho employs here this afternoon has been open all afternoon. They have come to Scott Benning here in the third quarter, and he has delivered. Every time he's had a ball in his hands, he's pulled it in for the reception, puts the pack in the third and 12. Villanova, number eight in the country, uh, beating up Boston 56-6. To go in the third quarter, third and 12 for Nevada. Oh, jumping around, we have flags down. Robinson said that Benning moved, did he? He, he moved, but Robinson was across the line of scrimmage when Benning moved, but Tony Edwards is going to be the culprit. Scott Benning can move. Tony Edwards cannot move. The offensive tackle that was set in the right side of the formation. When Tony moved, the whistle blew. The play was dead at that point. Fell against the pack for procedure. You're right. It was Benning moving, but the, the key guy was the right tackle, Tony Edwards. That'll make it still third down, but now third and 17 versus third and 12. The pack has found ways here in the third quarter to move the ball down the field, but also they found ways to kill the drive themselves. Procedure this is by the offense, interior lineman moving. And tell them repeat the third down. The pack. If you know what the snap count is, let your defensive man move, go on the snap count, draw him offside. Penalties, uh, or 10 penalties, excuse me, for 107 yards. You know, the Wolfpack scored on a middle screen to Reeves earlier. Is this the time with the defense and their ears back coming after you, James? They maybe look to go to another screen. But what's key is that the receivers, if you do throw the ball downfield, cover enough ground for the first down. Gatlin, the throw on third and long. Throws on a comeback, a great catch at the surface. Did he get it? He got it, he got it. Singleton was able to pull that one in, a shoe top catch. Great concentration by Singleton. Going down the left side 
side of the formation. Freddie Gallon underthrew him. But Singleton had enough presence. When he came off the ball, Gallon looked him off to the right side of the formation, came back to him. New Singleton had single coverage. Threw the ball to him. Singleton made a great break back on the ball to grab that one, shoot top high, keep the drive alive for the Wolfpack. They have momentum behind them. Third and 17, they convert it to the Idaho Vandal 32-yard line. And James, the amazing thing coming back on this artificial surface is that Singleton didn't fall down. He put the brakes on immediately. Great foot action on this artificial turf by Singleton. Fred Gatlin is now two, number two in all-time passing yardage. Holmes coming right side, turns a corner and turns on the burner. He'll get in the track of 25 to the 24-yard line. Jamie Holmes, very explosive. The look back runs his play very well. It's called a counter track. Well, they'll pull the offside and all into formation, the backside off of the lineman. Get him around the corner. That time they did an exceptional job of knocking the defensive lineman off their feet, allowing people to home freshmen out of Richmond, California, to get around the corner to pick up eight yards on first down. The team that beat Idaho last week, Northern Iowa, shut out their opponent, Morgan State, 49-0 today. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second and a yard. That one to throw. Wide open, bending the tight end over, throwing it complete. That'll stop the clock with 24 seconds. But let me again emphasize the fact that Fred Gatlin has now gone into the number two position in career passing ahead of Jeff Tisdell. He needed 256 yards to pass Tiz. So far this afternoon, he's got 262. Well, right there, that was Tommy Williams was on a little simple out. The tight end has been open on the right sideline all day. Freddie Gatlin did not put it up. He just kind of floated that one. Went over Williams' head. Could have been an easy reception for a first down if he'd have threw a proper pass. A two-back backfield for the Wolfpack on a third and one. Both tight ends are in. Gatlin on a long count. On the ground to home, trying to turn the corner left. He does. He's got the first down inside the 20, the 15, the 10, 5. He got to the goal line. Did he get in? No. They will stop him short at the one-yard line, but Diedrich Holmes turned on the afterburner when he got around the corner. Exceptional running by the freshman. Diedrich Holmes was able to turn the corner. But the key to this play is Keith Washington laid a crushing block around the corner on the cornerback when he came up. Keith locked up on him, put him on his back. That is a smash block that time. He leveled him. Diedrich Holmes showed an exceptional acceleration in getting down to the one-yard line. The Wolfpack has had very good field position and drive started here in the second half, and they have dominated the Vandals' defense. They're sitting down. They got their hands on their waist. They are a very tired group at this point in the contest. Holmes with 14 carries and 108 yards. The Wolfpack first and goal from the one-yard line. Gatlin to Holmes, the guy that got him there. He'll be a little bit short as Idaho's defense stuck Marine inside. Robinson was there. Brian Stanley also a backup defensive line inserted in goal line situation. Got great surge underneath the offensive line and tripped up Holmes in the backfield. Holmes may lose a yard. That is the end of the third quarter. We'll have to wait for the final 15 to see if the Wolfpack can go on top for the first time this afternoon. Idaho currently leading 23 to 17. We'll return to the Kibbe Dome here in Moscow. Catlin, goal to go at the one. They give the ball left side. The Wolfpack did not get in. They did not get in. They'll be stopped short around the half yard line. It was Diedrich Holmes who was pulled up short. Great surge by this Vandals defensive line once again. Last play of the third quarter, first play of the fourth quarter. What you need to do is run off tackle, not straight up the middle as you. They came straight up the middle that time. Go off tackle where you got your power and you got your angle against the defense and not straight into the meat of the defense. Gatlin wants a timeout. He wants to talk to the Wolfpack coaching staff. The, the pack has run a naked bootleg in this situation. We'll find out when we return here in Moscow, Idaho, in the Kibbe Dome. It is still a 23-17 ball game. Idaho on top, but we'll return. And got in the play back in 1981. The Wolfpack made a goal line stand at this end of the field. They held the Vandals for five downs. Let's hope the Vandals can't return the favor to the pack. A play off the left side of the offensive formation would get the Wolfpack a touchdown. That's, that is the weakest point in this Idaho defense, that right side of that defensive line. Third and a yard, a yard away. Gatlin rolls out right, throws for King on the break. He can't make the, did he make the catch? He made the catch at the half-inch line. He did not get in the end zone. He had to come back out of the end zone to make the catch. Freddie Gatlin underthrowing Freddie Gatlin did not get set. Freddie did a bootleg out to the right side, got a great block from Dietrich Holmes, but he underthrew King and he had to come out of the end zone and catch the ball on about the one, in, one foot line. The Wolfpack has to go for it here on four, fourth down, look for a quarterback sneak. King's feet were in the end zone, the ball was not. The ball has to break the plane. That big yellow stripe 
That is the key factor, not where your body is, but where the ball is. Now, can the Vandals hold? Fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Gatlin on a quarterback keeper. Did he get in? He's in. He got it. No signals yet, but Gatlin is in the end zone. We have got it on the field. The Wolfpack has a touchdown. Freddie Gatlin finally got the call. Quarterback sneak. There's no ability to fight on the guard. Send the gap every time you come to the line on a quick count. You can see Freddie Gatlin bracing himself up and down on the center. Just great leg drive up between the guard and tackle. Mitch Baker, Allen Maxwell have to be given all the credit for that touchdown. They had tremendous surge. But before Freddie Gatlin stopped, he was a yard and a half deep in the end zone. So Schwindinger can break the tie. We are tied at 23. The Wolfpack has not led yet this afternoon. The Dinger will try to put him on top. He does. It's a 24-23 ball game. 13 minutes and 46 seconds left to go. The balloon for the Vandals may have vanished. The air may be out of it. This will be the biggest play and the biggest drive of the afternoon. Idaho after the kick. If they're going to do something, James, they have got to do it now. The Wolfpack has fought and fought all afternoon. Coming up, being down for the first time this year in the opening drive. The Vandals drove straight down the field, put six points on the scoreboard, missed the extra point. Wolfpack had every reason to hang their head. But that's the pride and the proofness of the strong program is that they cannot be spotted by being down. The Wolfpack coaching staff went in halftime, made adjustments, came out, totally dominated the entire third quarter did not allow a first down by the Vandals offense. James, it should be a 34-23 game. The Wolfpack with a touchdown to Joe King that was called back by way of penalty, and then the field goal that hit, hit the bar. Right. And, you know, it could well be a 34-23 ball game. Right now, though, it's 24-23. Total domination. You were talking with the commissioner of the Big Sky at halftime. He had spoke that he felt what he saw that the Idaho defense was becoming a little weary, that the Wolfpack offense might have had superior athletes, and it came up to show there in the third quarter where they just dominated. It took the Pack 10 plays to get in, four of those at the goal line. They ate up four minutes and 21 seconds on the clock. But that determination not being denied when they got down within that red zone, coming down to a fourth and half yard, they had enough determination to say, hey, we need this touchdown, let's take it. Last time, Idaho had the ball for three plays and putted. If the defense can hold again for the Wolfpack, then the offense can really go to work on the clock. Schwindinger will kick. End over end kick, this will be returned. Saunders at the seventh, 15, 20. Runs into a crowd, and he's grabbed and spun down at the 26-yard line. Tony Amatia with a great job of coverage. Tony has been out on defense all afternoon and flying down on the kick cover team to make a great tackle on Saunders, not allowing him to get a great return out to the 26-yard line. Interesting how the pack has totally dominated the second half. They have not allowed Idaho a first down, and here we are in the fourth quarter. They must protect, though, against complacency here. You know you have Nesmeyer down, but he can strike quick at any time. They have to stay on top of their game. With a passing offense, you can be burned at any time, James. You're right. At their 26, Idaho first and 10. Nesmeyer comes away, looking right side. Will scramble now out of the pocket. Grabbed by Caspers. He got out of it. He's still looking to throw. Throws up a wounded duck and out of bounds. Boy, he threw that one away as Ali Ema Daly was not close to it. But Nesmeyer running for his fight in the backfield. Great job on two parties there. Big Joe Caspers fighting in the middle of the line of the middle of the line, doing a spin move to get out of the, the roughness of the middle line, grabbing Big Nesmeyer by the shoulders, but he got out of Big Joe's grasp, and a smart move by Nesmeyer, being able to throw that one up in the crowd and not being get called for a ground. Second and 10. Doug Nesmeyer strolling to the line of scrimmage on the ground. They want to run. Oh, George Bunny makes a one handed tackle, wrapping up the ball carrier and bringing him down near the 26-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Buddy was all over Ronnie White. George Buddy brought him down actually for a loss of a yard on that play. Great penetration by George Buddy up the middle, warding off the block, and he drove the center back. Big George wrapped him up, brought him down for a loss on the play. George Buddy here in the second half has been being, playing very inspired football. Third down, third and ten. Idaho has got to go in their bag of tricks somewhere and come up with something big at their own 26-yard line. They need something exceptional right here. Nesmeyer to throw. He's getting pressure. He's going to grab and sack. Mike Rogers got in. Rogers.
Rodgers breaking through the middle makes the big play defensively for the Wolfpack here early in the fourth quarter. The defense has just been playing outstanding this part of the game. They came with a twist stunt. Mike Rodgers did a fold inside, came around clean, grabbed Doug Nesmeyer, grabbed him to the ground for a loss of 12 on the play. The Wolfpack defense has come up big on every series here in the second half. Suggs That's how you become second rank in the country on defense. Sug trying to get him out of trouble with a punt. Spirals it high for Reeves. Reeves running to the right side at the 45. Comes back at midfield. The 45 of the Vandals. He'll go down at the 41-yard line. Reeves could have very easily run out of bounds. We have 12-13 left to go in the game. Nevada with a one-point lead. They'll have the ball when we return in one minute. And 24-23. We talked about the last series of downs for the Vandals being crucial. Now the Wolfpack must maintain possession and go down and get a score. This is where the Wolfpack has to learn how to put a team away. They are 41 yards away from a score. Gatlin rolling out right in the bootleg. Throws to wide open Joe King at the 30. At the 25, he is pushed down near the 21-yard line. The key factor in this drive right here is that the Wolfpack has never been in a pressure situation this year. Freddie Gallon has not had the opportunity to finish a, a football game this year. The two things are very critical together. Freddie Gallon rolled out that time to his left naked boot, was able to find Joe King out of the flat to pick up a great first down, but they have to learn how to bury this Vandals defense right here. Buster Hickman made the stop, but he was just wandering around in the secondary. That cover two will kill you every time. We'll talk about Fred Gatlin's numbers in just a minute. Another first down on the ground. Holmes coming right side, pounds his way into the line of scrimmage, maybe to the 21-yard line. Damon Taggart came in and made initial contact. He and Robinson are single-handedly holding this defense together. They, they've been exceptional players all afternoon, but the most critical part right here is the Wolfpack maintains possession of the football. They have controlled the ball the entire second half, which has been the key point. This Idaho defense is very tired. You see players leaning over with their hands on their hip. An exceptional job of controlling the ball by the offensive line this afternoon. Idaho State in control, as is Eastern Washington over Montana. Eastern leading 10-3, and they beat, uh, they lost to Weber State last week, 63-59. to And a barn burner lost in the last second. Gatlin, a little swing pass right side to Washington. Fake spins, and he'll get inside the 20 to maybe the 18-yard line. Good open field tackle. Damon Taggart again, James. I said he was holding them together. Taggart, Monk, Robinson have had, had exceptional afternoons. You're talking about all big sky players. Freddie Gallant actually threw a lateral out that time to Keith Washington, but Keith Washington was able to grab the ball. Great move at the end by Keith Washington, just being tripped up by an ankle by Taggart because he had a great spin move and another 10 yards of turf in front of him. Gatlin with 281 yards passing this afternoon. Third down and about seven to go from the 19-yard line. Movement. Jeff Robinson moved and touched the Wolfpack offense, and there was no flag prior to that. It was Scott Benning moved. The tight end is allowed to raise up and reset. Should be an offside on the defense. Exactly right, because Benning, the tight end, can move, James, and when Robinson made contact, the penalty should be against him. That is, that is the plus of of a receiver. A receiver is allowed to move once he's been set. He can get up and adjust as long as he's been set a second prior to the snap of the ball. Scott Benning is allowed that. That time Scott raised up out of his three-point, went back down. Robinson came across, thought it was the offensive lineman. The defense Procedure by the defense came across, touched the offense. That is the call. Procedure on the defense called by Gary Peters, our referee. So now the pack will have still a third down. It'll be third and two. And as in the first half, when the penalties were going against the Wolfpack, they've gotten a few in their favor here in the second half. We said, James, if you hang around long enough, the momentum will swing. When it does, you've got to take advantage of it. Well, when you're a proven winner and you have a team such talent-laden and experience-laden as the Wolfpack, you will find ways to win. They found ways here in the second half to come up from adversity that they, that they had in the first half, gathered themselves. The coaches did an admirable job in the halftime talked with the players in the locker room, came back out, established themselves in a dominant role in the second half, and has just completely controlled the ball game. It is third down and short with 10-10 to go in the ball game. Remember, in the Big Sky Conference, though, should it go that way, you do have overtime. Nevada with 14 points here in the second half. Joe King is wide left, two tight ends in for Nevada. 
the ground to go to Holmes. He runs up the middle, takes a tackler with him. He'll get near the 10-yard line. And he gets a first down on that run. Great surge by the offensive line. Diedrich Holmes, the young freshman, being pressed into a lot of action here this afternoon up at the QB Dome in Moscow, Idaho, has responded very well. He's had an outstanding afternoon for his first long game as a college player. Jerry Keating made the stop, but a yard too late as the pack needed that yardage for the first down, and it'll get it down to the 11-yard line, first and 10 from the Vandal 11. Clock is moving. Nevada leading 24-23. Gatlin with the bootleg, comes out left, fakes the throw. He wants to carry. Gatlin at the 10. He will dive to the 8. Gatlin hesitated, and he who hesitates will not get a touchdown. But it... it... We have a player down uh, for the Wolfpack. Tom Rebecca is the offensive lineman. But in the hesitation for Freddie Gatlin, don't put your quarterback in a vulnerable situation. Why put him out where he's taking a hit? Tom Rebecca, probably the heart and soul of this offensive line for the Wolfpack, is walking off the field. Freddie Gatlin did a great job on the bootleg and disguised it, but Tommy Rebecca, you hate to see him in a position like this because he's fought so hard from adversity and injuries to come back and perform so well early in this season to come off the field like this. I thought the crowd was going to show no style at all because when Rebecca got up, he tossed his helmet. He took his uh, mouthpiece out and threw that, and the crowd started to boo him. Had they known what Rebecca has gone through the last two years, they would have been on their feet applauding him because he's coming to the sideline, again, limping on that left leg. And it's one of those leg injuries, and Tommy cannot stand to go through another leg injury. Second and goal to go. Ball is on the nine-yard line. Gatlin sprinting out right, looking in the end zone, trying to get away from trouble, still running around. He runs out right, gets a Washington block. He's inside the five. He will go in. freshman era. Freddie Gatlin dropped back in the pocket, was able to elude the rush. Big, the offensive tackle did a tremendous job of blocking on the right side. Freddie Gatlin came in, avoided another tackle, went to the sideline, cut back against the grain, against the floor of the defense, saw he had an opening, was able to gallop into the end zone for the touchdown. Great drive by the Wolfpack and Freddie Gatlin. 9.06 remaining. Schwindinger will try to add the extra. The Dinger nails it. It is a 31-23 to game. 9.06 remaining, still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. We'll return to the Kibbe Dome. Once again, we'll be back after this timeout. More critical each possession. The, the vulnerability of each defense is presented right here because you have two very strong passing attacks. The Idaho offense dominated the first half. Nevada's offense has dominated the second half and both by the air, mixing it with the run. Well, Freddie Gatlin with two touchdowns rushing and two throwing. I, I don't know how you could pick anybody but Fred Gatlin for the outstanding player of this game. Well, that last run was so outstanding, it will make anyone's highlight real. Schwendinger to Saunders at the 7. He's at the 20. He's got a seam at the 30. Grabbed from behind and pulled down by Andre Howard. Howard makes a touchdown down saving tackle. Those are things that you have to protect against. Both teams are so explosive. Specialty teams, offensively, defensively, they can come up with the big plays. One of the Vandals' touchdowns came from a defensive interception. But the Wolfpack was able to respond well here in the second half and put themselves back in the lead for the first time this afternoon. James, we're going to give another trip to Palm Springs away in our post-game show. The Gatlin run is going to be the play of the second half. There's no doubt about that. Got a phone. I want to qualify for that one. Out there, 37, first and 10, Idaho. Nussmeyer faking the die, rolling out left. Drejos giving chase. He throws short at the 40, caught and spun down. Ali Alima Daly will go down near the 41. But Nesmeyer at that time did what he does well. He moved himself out of the pocket. He is not a proven pocket passer. He throws the ball well when he's on the roll. He rolled out to the left side of the formation that time, being pursued by Mark Drehos. Got away from Mark, was able to deliver the ball to Daly for a five-yard gain. James, a touchdown and a two-point conversion could send this game into an interesting area, overtime. Nussmeyer pitches the ball to Pierce. Coming right side, he shakes a tackle at the line of scrimmage and dives forward near the 44. Remember, you don't end in a tie. There is a playoff. There is overtime. The Big Sky believes in entertaining the crowds, and it's great to have overtime in a situation. Devon Pierce has not been a part of the offense that he was in the first half. He has been held in check. That time, he was limited to a two-and-a-half-yard gain on that carry where he had 84 in the first half. Big third down once again, third and three. Vandals at their own 44. 
Nussmeyer with a long count. Steps back, he wants to throw. Throws short, it's incomplete. Heavy pressure from Joe Caspers. Joe Caspers was in Nussmeyer's face. Big Joe Caspers came up big on that play. Joe came with a swim move right between the guard center gap that time. He was on the nose, came with a swim move to his right side, got over, got up in Nesmeyer's face. Being 6'7 is a long way to throw the ball over, and Big Joe got his hands up in the air. If Idaho has a fake punt, this is the time to use it with 7.44 to go. No first downs here in the second half for the Vandals. And chances are running very slim, and the Wolfpack hasn't come after a kick all afternoon. Sub will punt. They come after it, but don't get it. Sug with a great kick, high to Reeves. He'll fair catch it at the 10-yard line. So Nevada will go on offense once again. 7.37 to go. Again, working on the clock will be big for them as they lead 31 to 23. The Wolfpack has shown here in the second half that they can control the football. They've moved the ball down the field at wheel. Right now, they have the Idaho defense very off balance because Freddie Gatlin has run with the ball. They didn't see that at all in the first half. The last two series, he did not mind rolling out, getting to the outside, pressing the corner. Now the defense is really stretched. They're sitting back in the zone defense. Do they leave the zone, come up to a man-to-man, -man, try to force the corners? Diedrich Holmes will remain the lone running back. Three wide receivers are right. Nevada at their 15-yard line. Holmes will get the call. A little seam right side. He got through it up near the 20-yard line. The ball was loose momentarily. Billy Branca is in that offensive front as Tommy Werbeckis is on the sideline, and Werbeckis has the shoulder pads off. Yeah, Tommy doesn't look like he's going to be back. Sad break for Tommy Werbeckis, but Billy Branca will do an admirable job filling in. They ran off that side of the offensive line, the right side of the offensive line, allowing Diedrich Holmes to pick up five yards. A good play on first down. Put yourself in a second down and five situation. James Holmes with 118 yards on the ground this afternoon. And very, very dominating yards that he's picked up. Idaho defense is tired, but can they bow their necks and stop the path? Holmes will get the call, this time coming left. He runs into Tiger in the middle. He will not gain anything as they will push him back. So that'll make it a crucial third down situation. And Monk, the other mid middle linebacker is right in the thick of things also. These linebackers for Idaho have played an exceptional game this afternoon, running directly at them. They've been able to withstand the pressure of this Wolfpack running game. But the problem that they've had has been, been withstanding the sweeps that the Wolfpack can come with and the rollouts from the quarterback. Great situation here for a bootleg by Freddie Gatlin. Well, the crowd at the Kibbe Dome once again fired up and on their feet. They want to put their team back in this one. They know the Wolfpack has got to be held. Clock moving with 6.15 to go in the game. Gatlin to throw on third down. Plenty of time. Arm fake. Hale's going to run. He'll have enough for the first down and more. Over the 35, over the 40. The 45, he slides down just shy of midfield. Again, may have been the backbreaker play of the afternoon. Freddie Gatlin showing a sign of experience that time, knowing that his team needs a big play, having enough fresh presence of mind not to make a foolish pass. He went back in the pocket. He observed the defense. He looked to his right. He came back, looked to his left, could not find anything, brought the ball straight up the middle of the field, avoided the first wave of tackles. Great presence, field generalship by Freddie Gatlin to pick up the first down up to the 48-yard line. The other thing he's learned well, James, is get down. Don't take a big lift. Didn't take a hit at all. Pack trying to run off the clock. On the ground, Holmes banging into people in midfield. Still struggling forward. Loose ball. It's on the field. Pick up by the Vandals. Holmes is on the field. The Vandals are back in action. Idaho defense knowing that they must come up with a big play. This ball tackle. The first guy grabs the ball there. The second man rolls out with the football. On his way to the ground before he can make contact with the first. Keith Washington will strip with the ball. Idaho comes up with a great turnover for themselves at the goal 48 yard line, their best field position of the second half. And they have not had a first down with 544 to go. Doug Nussmeyer has to reach down and pull them out. Good turn for the Wolfpack defense. They must come up big once again. Murphy is wide right. Saunders on the left side. Now Murphy will go in motion through the backfield. Three wide receivers left. Nussmeyer throws it back to Murphy. He wants to throw it. He's looking to throw. Grab and drop. A great play by Brock Marion. Marion came blowing across. Murphy looked up, and there was number seven, his identical number in his face. Face-to-face, -face, number seven. Great play call by the Idaho Vandals. you got to love the, the engine ingenious by John Smith that time to throw a lateral pass when you get a turnover. He threw the pass to Murphy. 
Brock Marin, great reaction time, charging straight across, did not take the fake, just went after his legs, brought him out. Big loss on the play for the Idaho Vandals. Loss of 10, second and 20, now back at their 38. No back backfield, Pierce goes wide left. Nussmeyer to throw. Drifting around, still looking. He's got running room on the left side. Now he sets up, he wants to throw deep. The Hail Mary downfield for Taylor. Taylor can't get it. Overthrown for Chris Taylor. That time, Nesmeyer had all the time in the world, but as you said earlier, Nesmeyer is not a solid passer when he has to throw deep. He just hung that one out. Great time given him by the, by the offensive line of the Vandals. The Wolfpack were running a stun up front. They were able to knock off the entire defensive line. If not for Nick Harker coming up in the end to force Nesmeyer to, to throw that one, he could have run that one downfield for great yardage. Nesmeyer, in the last 20 passes, doesn't have big yardage at all. He is 6 of 20 for a total of just 28 yards. Now it's the time, third and 20 at their 38-yard line. Again, no back backfield. Nesmeyer to throw. No secret there. He's going to be sacked. Mike, Mike Rogers. Rogers made a big play earlier sacking Nesmeyer. He's in his face again. He's sacking down on the 10-yard line and earlier in the quarter. Mike Rogers came up big. Nesmeyer after that was limping off the field. Mike Rogers, great surge. Up at the defensive line, Big Joe Casper's grab, did a twist up. Mike Rogers came clean underneath, slammed Nesmeyer to the turf, being held by one of the offensive linemen, but great play by the defensive line. He was being held. You didn't see any flag down, James. No, not many on the Vandal side of the ball this afternoon. Sug with another good punt to Reeves back at the 17. Brian trying to come wide left. It's by the first man. Now cuts back, and he will go down near the 30-yard line with 4.09 left to go in the game. The offense trots back on. Nevada leads 31 to 23. In situations like this, this is where you learn how to win a championship. Let's see if the Wolfpack can keep, keep the ball. If they do, it is over. We'll be back. David Reeves has averaged almost 14 yards on six punt returns. Brian Reeves has done an exceptional job. He's come straight up the field this afternoon on his punt returns. What he had not done in his prior four contests where he tried to jute around and make people miss, if you run right up past the coverage team, you will force people to miss. They do not normally have enough time to break down, and Brian Reeves has done an exceptional job when he's got his hand on the ball on punt returns this afternoon. Well, our play of the second half is the scramble by Fred Gatlin, who is by far the outstanding player on this field this afternoon. We will give a trip to Palm Springs away in our post-game show, so stay on our radio side or join a KRNB News for Reno. Whatever way you want to do it, it's been a simulcast and it's been a lot of fun from Moscow, Idaho. As we go along, that could, might even turn into a play of the year. That could have been the single most play, most devastating play against this Vandal defense this afternoon because just when they thought they had the Wolfpack stop, might be able to get back into the game, Freddie Gatlin stretched the defense out, took it in for a touchdown. Again, the Wolfpack trying ball control. They have three wide receivers left. At their own 31, it is first and 10. Gatlin taking an awful lot of time. With five seconds, he gets a snap off on the ground. Diedrich Holmes backing his way, sidestepping to near the 40-yard line. Diedrich Holmes that time did an exceptional job. Great play calling by Freddie Gatlin. Got up to the line of scrimmage, did not like what he had called in the huddle. Had 11 seconds on the play clock, audibled out to a, a counter play inside where there was just a straight hitter up the middle. Diedrich Holmes was able to back in for a nine-yard gain. Great second down position here for the Wolfpack. Holmes with 126 yards on the ground. He's going to share some of those honors with Fred Gatlin. Clock moving with 3.30 to go. Again on the ground. Holmes coming left. Cuts it back upfield. He will get to the 43-yard line. But the type of game that was needed from the running back position for the Wolfpack today, there was a big question mark who would carry the load. Coming into the game, we knew that Zeke Moore would not be playing. At the start of the game, they inserted Eric Smith. They felt that Eric being a senior that he could respond. But in the end, they had to go back to the true freshman, Diedrich Holmes, who has stepped to the forefront in the running derby of the Wolfpack running backs. First down, Holmes gets that at his own 44. 31-23 our score. Nevada trailing at halftime by 13. Again, Holmes powering his way up the middle. Does a near flip, but still hangs on to the ball. He'll go down at the 47 or 8. Idaho trying to preserve the clock now. We'll take a timeout. But James, next week, it's homecoming. 
Back home, Idaho State will be in town, and certainly on Thursday, let me mention again, the Hall of Fame inductions, the Hall of Fame dinner will take place. You, along with Jerry Dale, so Mr. Robinette, and the 1979 swim and diving team will be inducted. Along with Johnny Hunt. Well, it, it's a great honor. I'm very pleased to be inducted into the University of Nevada Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, probably the culmination of my career in athletics. Uh, it was something that I did not know would come along, but I'm very pleased that I've had the honor of being inducted as one of the better football players at the university. If you'd like to attend that dinner, by the way, there are tickets available. So just call the athletic department anytime next week, and they'll uh, have tickets for you. It'll be a good affair. It always is. A lot of the uh, current Hall of Famers return, and it's a good night to reminisce about sports and a lot of the other things at the university. Well, I'm looking for a fun evening, but I also enjoyed this afternoon here out on the field, and not to take away anything from these players, because these are the true heroes here this afternoon that are, born, that are playing out here on this gridiron. This is where a championship team is truly formed. You have to know how to put the nail in the coffin. Right here, if Nevada expects to have that dominating championship season, they have to know how to finish this game this afternoon. This is only one of the hurdles to get over. This there are many more. But it's the first hurdle, and you have to get that first hurdle before you can find that second. Second and six, thrown 48-yard line. Gatlin has him at the line. Singleton is wide right. Reeves on the left side, but don't expect him to throw it. As I say that, he looks at Singleton, fires the completion at the 45. Singleton will go down at the 41. And Millsap is very fortunate that he was able to hang on to Singleton's leg because Singleton was just about ready to break into full stride. But another first down for the Wolfpack. Just as you mentioned, don't expect him to throw it. Idaho's defense thinking the same thing. Let's keep the watch them. They're going to keep the ball on the ground, try to grind out the clock. But Air Alders has been known this year, has been very efficient in passing the football and doing a great job here in the second half. Yep, one sideline constantly trying to outgas the other. At the Vandal 41-yard line, first and 10, the clock moving with 2.35 to go. Gatlin on the ground, Holmes coming left side. He's got off seam. He's inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. Diedrich Holmes running with an awful lot of power, punishing the defensive back. Terry Green made the stop. A lot of authority in Diedrich Holmes running here in the second half. He's come out as a proven football player. And if you look at this Idaho defense, in the first quarter, they were springing off the ground. Now they're getting the one knee, gathering themselves to two feet. They are tired and weary at this point. Idaho calls another timeout, their second. Trying to find some way to preserve the clock long enough to get another possession and then hope for the best that they can go the length of the field and then convert a two-pointer to put it in overtime. That's the only chance they have. And a thing that our fans not here at the game did not see, when, Chris, when Freddie Gatlin came off the field, the first person was able to meet him was Chris Vargas to come in to give him some inspiration to advise him on things that he's recognizing on the sideline. That's something that a lot of people don't understand in this quarterback tandem, that they're not competing against each other. They're competing as teammates, and they want to see the other one do well and win. You said something earlier earlier, James, that is very, very important for Wolfpack fans to remember. This is the first game that Gatlin has gone into the second half and completed the whole game. Yeah, this is something that was needed, though. You have the great quarterback tandem in Northern Nevada at the University of Nevada, but to have a quarterback that is your number one, you have to know when you get in a critical contest like this that he is your true field general, and he has shown true field leadership this afternoon in taking the Wolfpack to a second half lead. Gatlin and comparing Gatlin to Nussmeyer, he completed 12 of 17 for a touchdown to 150 yards. He ran for two touchdowns. Nussmeyer was two of eight for 14 yards. And we still have some time left on the clock. That is in the second half. Again, the Wolfpack on the ground. Holmes slicing up the middle, getting yardage. He's inside the 20, dragging people near the 15-yard line. Diedrich Holmes doesn't think this one is over yet. He knows that it's not over. You spoke about a player of the game in mentioning Freddie Gatlin. You can't take anything away from Freddie's fine performance. But this afternoon, you really have to look at a co-players of the game because you've had Diedrich Holmes come to the forefront. This has been the most outstanding game by a running back at the University of Nevada since Ray Whalen of last year, where he came out and totally dominated a contest. Diedrich Holmes has set his name in the book, saying, I'm going to be here for a long time to come. And Zeke Moore may not get that number one back return to it. Holmes with 155 yards on the ground and trying to add to it. Trying to shake the tackle. That time, a little shake and bake won't get him much. As he's dragged down about the line of scrimmage, Idaho has taken their last time out with 1.45 remaining. But a situation here, the clock is not in favor of Idaho. Being down by eight points at this time, 
being only a second down play here, second and 12, the University of Nevada has to hold on to the football. A field goal is not even a smart situation in this if it comes down to fourth down. When you have 80 plus yards of real estate in front of you and your offense hasn't really done anything in the second half and the University of Nevada's defense is dominating as it's been here in this last 28 minutes of the football game, you have to look forward to them coming out and being able to stop this Idaho offense if you can't punch it in for a touchdown. It has certainly been two separate halves of football. Idaho dominating the first half on the ground, and then the Wolfpack defense not allowing a first down by the Vandals in the second half. They have pitched the shutout here in the second half. They have not allowed a first down. They have not allowed any plus yardage really here to speak of. They've come out. I would have loved to have been in the, in the locker room at halftime with Chris Off to listen to what he has said to his players because he did something to really motivate this group and to let them know if they wanted to be winners, this is where the winning started. They had some blowouts. Every 55 points a game coming in here had not been tested, but they were tested this afternoon, and they have answered their test. Nevada trailing at the intermission, 23 to 10, has tacked on 21 points in the second half, and with a touchdown call back and a field goal hitting the bar and just dominated the entire second half against this Vandals defense. Second and 12 at the 17. Holmes trying to come wide left. Good blocks in front of him. He lowers his head and gets to the 12 or 13 yard line. But the best part about that play in running sweeps, you eat up the clock. And that's what Nevada's doing, not only eating up the clock, but they're stretching this defense. This Idaho defense has been very weary this second half. They've been on the field for the majority part of the second half because their offense has not been able to obtain a first down. Diedrich's home has just been a dominant force along with Freddie Gatlin. That brings up a third down after the four-yard gain, third and eight. And Freddie Gatlin has not been pressured in passing the ball. I know Coach Rippy was not happy with the performance of his offensive line, and he got those guys motivated himself. Let's see if Nevada wants another touchdown. On the sideline, the players are pointing at the clock. Holmes will take it on the ground, bumps into Robinson, then he'll go wide right, cuts it upfield, and lowers his head, he'll get to the seven or eight yard line. Now, Big the pack will have to make a decision on fourth down. Big play call by Wolfpack. This is not a situation where you want the field goal because if it's blocked, then they can return it for the touchdown. If you go for it the way the offensive line has been playing here in the fourth quarter, you have a fourth and three. This is a situation to find out if they have the heart to do it. Go for the first down, put them in a vulnerable situation here. Tom Matter, who is the long snapper on punts and a third string tight end has drifted onto the field. And we only got five seconds on the play clock, so they're gonna take the penalty and let it run down and go for the field goal probably here. So time will expire. As you said, James, the pack will get a five-yard penalty. The amazement about that, I wonder why the pack did not call a timeout with two seconds to go on the play clock, not use the yardage, and then go for the first down on fourth down. Well, Swindinger is going to come in and try to ice this thing with a field goal attempt. And Swindinger has not really had a pressure kick all year. He had the two field goal attempts in the third quarter. One went wide, fell a little short, and the one that hit the goal post. But this is his, few, his first true pressure kick as a college player to see if he can deliver. It'll be a 30-yard field goal attempt from the right hash with 21, or 27 seconds remaining. And a lot still can happen. If he doesn't make it, his block could be returned, two-point conversion, you're in overtime, or the Vandals get another opportunity. You never know with a guy like Nussmeyer. What a great position, though, for a fake field goal. Send one of the backs out to flat and uh, have him open in the end zone. Williamson is a converted quarterback, and he is the holder. Schwindinger will kick it. It is no good off to the right. The Dinger misses it with 24 seconds remaining. All those people that left the Kimmy Dome have got to be wondering now, should they be headed back towards their seat? But eight seconds, 24 seconds left on the clock. Swindinger had a great stroke. He just hooked it. He did not push the ball. He just pulled it and it just let, let it go straight and missed that one by a good three or four yards. But here you have one of the top secondaries in the country. They cannot allow anyone behind them. Idaho is without timeouts. What you want to do is force them to pass the ball over the middle, bring him down before they can get another playoff. They have not given up a first down in this half. Joe Paspers has been banished to the sideline. 
the official is telling Joe Caspers to leave the field of play. What Joe has is a knot tied in the front of his jersey, which is illegal because the holding has been going on by this Idaho offensive line. Joe had tied his jersey in the front. If he had tied his jersey in the back, it would have been a legal uh, equipment adjustment. But by doing it in the front, it makes it an illegal equipment that he's wearing. So he had to leave the field for at least one play to get that knot out of the front of his jersey. Well, they're trying to untie it now, or Joe's going to tuck it in, one of the two. He's got a tall to tuck it in. Out there, 20 yard line, Idaho first and 10. Gusmeyer being chased by him by Rogers. He throws incomplete. Rogers grabbed him. Mike Rogers was trying for his third sack of the afternoon, and Doug Nussmeyer was running for his life. Mike Rogers has become very well acquainted with Doug Nussmeyer all afternoon. That time, Nevada's come with stunts the whole second half. That's been an adjustment that they made defensively to get pressure on Nussmeyer because he had adequate time in the first half to throw. They have not been able to pick up the stunts by the defensive line of the University of Nevada, and they put great pressure on Nussmeyer this entire second half. Gil Murphy, wide left. Casey Dunn, their All-American receiver, is in the slot left. Nesmeyer to throw. Pressure. He steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle behind Dunn. A bad throw. Nesmeyer was crashed into by Mike Rogers. We have an injured player for Idaho also down on the surface. Got one of the offensive linemen that's down on the surface and it seems to be holding his leg. Jody Strong. An offensive lineman, a backup offensive lineman, was in the game. Got kind of tangled up in, in uh, the mayhem in there and is down on the turf. Only 12 seconds remaining in this one. 12 seconds and two downs. Right after the ball game, uh, our simulcast, we're going to split. We're going to send it back to Kurt Siglin in Reno on KRNV News 4 Reno. And then uh, we'll take a break and return with our radio side of it. We'll give another trip away to Palm Springs. The Wolfpack here defensively, though, they have to feel great admiration for themselves for what they've accomplished. They came out and shut down one of the most potent offensive attacks, attacks in the country. Idaho came into this game averaging just a, a hair under 500 yards in total offense, 497. Nesmeyer, one of the top-rated quarterbacks in the country, averaging 370 yards passing, has not done anything this entire second half. They came out and played the defense that the fans of Northern Nevada was accustomed to seeing every afternoon in Mackey Stadium. They've exploited here in the second half here in Idaho. The Wolfpack fans have been sitting far to our left at about the 10-yard line and really enjoying themselves now, Jay. No, they've been standing on their feet the entire second half. Nesmeyer again to throw, surveying the situation. He wants to go up top of the deep one. Playing center field, Reggie Robinson intercepts all the way back at the 26-yard line. Robinson with the interception, and that will bury the Vandals. Reggie Robinson ball hawking for the Nevada defense, just playing free safety in open field, reading Doug Nesmeyer, the quarterback. Reggie Robinson went with the flow. Nesmeyer rolled out. Reggie Robinson flowed with him, came up with the great interception, and he told him to say hi to his dad this afternoon who was listening back in Northern California. So Reggie picks one, and the secondary for the Wolfpack. Two years ago, they were victimized. This year, that secondary, held together. that secondary that came up here two years ago as a true freshman that was victimized probably by the best quarter, quarterback in the conference came and redeemed themselves this afternoon, showing that they have arrived. They were vandalized two years ago. They were vandal vandalized, but they came in and put a pack drive on them this afternoon. And they were vin uh, vindicated this afternoon. They played well. Gatlin will step back and kneel down, and that will end it. The Wolfpack here in the Kimmy Dome in Moscow, Idaho, will win 31-23. They'll remain undefeated at 5-0. The Vandals will slip to 3-2, and, and we'll send it back to Reno. It was a great first half for Idaho, but the second half of the Wolfpack spelled the difference. Kurt Siegman will send it to you. Our radio crew will return in just one minute. a final of 31 to 23 UNR's record now 5 and 0 oh, some very big plays to show you in this one first the El Dorado player of the game no question about it Freddie Gatlin he did it in through the air and he did it on the ground what an athletic play here in all kinds of trouble in the backfield he gets a seam and then he scoots his way into the end zone for the score Fred Gatlin ran for two touchdowns threw for two others he threw for 292 yards overall Gatlin now in second place on the UNR all-time yardage list. He trails only Eric Beavers. Fred Gatlin, the El Dorado player of the game. Honorable mention goes to running back Diedrich Holmes. He rushed for 160 yards for the Wolfpack offense. 
the UNR defense seemed to turn up the intensity early in the third quarter. They absolutely dominated the Vandals offense in the second half. The hit of the game right here. It's brought to you by the Northern Nevada Dairyman. Mike Rogers putting the heat on Doug Nussmeyer. Down he goes. Big sack for the defense. Idaho's offense had nowhere to hide in the second half. This play, one of the reasons UNR is returning home with a victory. UNR did not allow Idaho one first down in the entire second half. The Wolfpack had 24 first downs in the second half. Idaho, zero. For the play of the game, we moved to early in the fourth quarter. UNR coming back from that 13-point halftime deficit. They faced fourth and goal from the one-inch line. Fred Gatlin called his own number. The ball rest resting right on the goal line. Gatlin on the keeper. He rolls to his left and hits pay dirt. The pack with a huge fourth down conversion. The play of the game brought to you by Ray Heating. That put UNR in the lead 24-23. The Wolfpack was definitely in business after that. The pack wins their first game in Moscow, Idaho since 1983. So UNR will be returning home with a very exciting win under their belt. We'll be back to wrap, out, uh, wrap up our post-game show right after this. 16th against NAU. Both games can be seen right here live on KRNV. And that's a wrap up on our coverage today of the UNR Idaho game. Once again, the final score Wolfpack 31, Idaho 23, a tremendous second half comeback by the Wolfpack. They, re they will retain their number one ranking. UNR now 5 and 0. Oh, and next week, the Pack returns home. They'll host Idaho State. Stay with News 4 all week for coverage leading up to that game. It's homecoming next week. I'm Kurt Sieglin. Thanks for joining us.